Hello, hello, and welcome to the program. I'm Dane Hennen. These are tonight's stories. Just kidding. Uh, we're doing a little bit of live detailing out here. It's going to be a fun one, yet again. Thought we had some fun last week. We're going to do it again. Uh, this time, we're testing out some new things. We're going to go outside to the wash bay. Let's take a look out there. Oh, there's the guys. All right. Hey so uh, Anthony, let's cut over and see what they have to say. From the rag company, uh, doing a live event today. We're super excited uh, to have you guys watching because we're doing a test run. We want to make sure all of our live stuff is working properly, but also watch this Toyota yeah, behind us. Yeah, Nick got this. Our technical director picked us up this week, and not only did he get a screaming deal on it, it did. it's kind of a little bit dirty. Not too bad, though. It's, it's dirty Let's enough, say it's right? not as bad as the Montero. Yeah, not, oh geez, nothing will be as bad as so, that. So we're going to, but, but we wanted to, like Anthony said, test some products, test our equipment. Yeah. Uh, use the outside wash bay. Very nice I idea. Yeah. Wash this bad boy up. Then we're going to pull it in and uh, we're actually going to clean the interior using color lock products. Yeah. yeah. Uh, get all the going through, sharp and, lighter, yeah. and uh, make everything nice. And who knows, maybe uh, the boys from Color Lock will pop in and uh, give us some direction. Give us some tips, right? Some you tips know. and tricks. Because yeah. God, God knows, knows we need, we need it. it. So, yeah, yeah like Levi said, it's a beautiful fall, fall day. It's a little windy yeah, today. So, uh, if we pick up any extra wind noise, we apologize about that. But um, this is mainly to be a test on our, for our system uh, and also to get a car clean. And so, today we're going to be using uh, GSF by Coach Kemi, which is their gentle snow foam. Uh, and we're also going to be using uh, the same soap in the bucket uh, with a couple of mitts. And then we have the IK Foam Pro 12 with Power Clean It that we're going to spray the wheels. And then we have um, our soft bristle long wheel brush that we're going to be using to yeah. clean up the And we're using, using the pressure washer in here, which is actually connected, connected to our soft, soft water, water system, system, our spot-free yeah. water, water, water system. So, so that'll, that'll be really nice because nice it is. we do have a little bit of sun, but the temperature's perfect for uh, for getting some stuff washed. Some washing temperature. Right? That's right. Water I'm going gonna, gonna to set down my bang here. Did you do apple? No. Thank you very much. Live and uh, brought us a couple bangs. So thank you guys. All right, man. that thing's on. I think this thing's on, man. So we're gonna go let this rip. This is our obsessed garage. The new PF22 with the uh, the the new upgraded uh, bottom cart in there, which looks pretty cool. I'm excited to use that and take that for a rip as well. Um, so Levi, do you want to do me a favor of flipping up those uh, those windshield wipers there? Oh, that's okay. All right, just just something that I like to do. You know, well, maybe I'll get them on my side oh, as thanks. well. Yeah, no problem, no problem. And so we're going to be rinsing from top to bottom. You guys have seen us do this a thousand times. It's nothing new, but I'm uh, just going to have fun with it. I'm going to supervise. Oh. oh, it's refreshing. It's like a nice cool breeze. It's right? like a wet, more of a wet breeze, but and it probably feel a lot better if it was warmer out, but... This is the closest we can get to the ocean, Levi. Yeah. So just kind of enjoying it. feel like we're on the Oregon coast. Now we're not going for some crazy detail today. I'm amazed this thing's got some protection on it. It's, it's look at the look at the way that water is beating, man. It's something on it. I don't know Sheeting what's off on well, it. beating well. I'm impressed. Good old spit shine. Now this thing still needs a good polish. It needs rock chip repair. It needs kind of everything in between, but. Regardless, everybody likes a new clean car, a new used clean car. You know, being a Dodge Ram 1500 owner myself, I know what it's like to appreciate a, an older clean vehicle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Made like perfect. Not gonna lie though, guys, I do feel like Britney Spears with this headset thing on. It is, uh, it is different, right? I feel like I'm in the early 2000s. I, I, I don't know if you knew this, but one of the great things is I've been added with a lavalier. So now I not only have this sweet mic, but I've got another one popping out of the shirt. We really do like, like bionic, bionic people, people doing, doing this. Three wires coming out of me, uh, which I'm very excited about. Well, our video team just keeps giving us equipment to put on. This I'm like, what's, what's, what's next? Gabe put his, put it, plugged it all in, put it down my shirt and everything. I was like, oh my gosh. I don't have a GoPro attached to my head to be honest. I, you might just keep I talking and you never know. About it. Man, this pressure washer is so quiet. 
That's because it's indoors. <laughs> So in case you guys are wondering, we got this whole setup. Uh, our friend, Detail Plus, TC Plessy, built this whole system for us. And it actually goes inside the building and is connected to our... So we have a little Wi-Fi or a T that comes out and uh, is connected to both guns. So when the pressure washer is on, whether you want to go inside or outside, you can basically uh, start spraying and uh, have some fun with it. So pretty exciting stuff. Super nice to have after all those years of running just beat up pressure washers. All right. What do you got in here? Power clean? That's power clean there. Wow, you didn't even pump that up. You're just ready to got rock and roll. I didn't even try it. I didn't think. So this is a pre soak we're doing power clean 10 to 1. We're hitting the lowers, hitting the wheels with it. Um, these wheels are new. Um, I believe Nick uh, got them from uh, Gabe, one of our other directors here, and he, uh, he hooked them up with some new, uh, new wheels and tires off of 2020, 2019, Tacoma? 2019. 2019. And so uh, through those odds, that's it, man. I couldn't believe it. And so um, they are pretty much like new. They're super clean. They don't really need a whole lot. So power clean, a little bit of agitation, it'll do the job. Um, Levi, what's your plan? Are you want to knock out the wheels first when we get the phone? No, I just wanted to spray them just to help knock down okay. Okay. some of this tire dressing that's on these tires. What's on there? I don't know. Someone looks like they put a pretty insane dressing on them, and I just want to get all that off. Looks like some hot shine. Yeah, it looks like some Meguiar's hot shine. Or oh. armor all. So I'm going to go shorty I don't know. for this, uh, this foam. Oh, there's a Dodge Ram over there. Oh. Oh. So just wanting to get up underneath there to help break oh, that yeah. down. Oh yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. Levi, do you want to just hold this cord? I know your your shoulder's hurting. I, wanna... I can hold the cord. All right, all right, thank you. Okay. I'll use my left hand. Lighting up the GSF, baby. Coach Kemi. You, you got the hose all tangled up. So. Do I? Yeah. Come on, kink it. Here we go. I'm going. Oh, you gotta go this. You gotta come back over here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. When, it, when it's live, you just. You know, there you go. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's much better. Oh, oh, the smell. That smells oh, so good. It smells good. That's my favorite. Favorite smelling soap. Soap, soap, 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 soap. Soap, Can't go that way. <laughs> Light swivel. There you go, nice. All right. Well, uh, yeah, it's even full. With that, with the new thing, it's still gonna fall over. Oh, I think it isn't the right idea. Probably gonna pull again. Yeah, just take it off, and then you don't have to worry about it so much. You wanna hand me the gun? Yes, sir. Well, I'll put it in the holster.
Dane, are people liking this? Is this exciting? I can't tell. <laughs> people oh, are enjoying it. They're just getting uh, so getting comfortable. He could be saying, oh my gosh, Anthony. This is the worst this is not what we wanted to hear. What? What do you mean? So, uh, Anthony, I'm washing top to bottom, I'm as you awesome. suggested on the latest episode of Wash Wednesday. I am also washing top to bottom. I think Nick ran this through the car wash already. Did he? I don't, well, maybe like the other day when he got it, just to knock all the dirt off of it. Do you think he took it through a brush wash or a touchless? I don't know, maybe he washed it himself in his driveway. Maybe. He washed it himself. He washed it himself. We got clarification. Nothing like getting a new rig and uh, getting it all washed up. Something sad is going to that. The first wash that I feel like it was where you really get to know the car. Oh, these are those prototype mitts. We are using the prototype mitts. Oh, wow. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna bring it up. Well, it's a prototype. We're we testing already, stuff. You already said it. Yeah, people got to see them, so. Did you also notice this new plastic bug shield? I did. I, for one, am a big fan of taking these off and not putting them on, so. But Nick's the kind of guy that goes the opposite way. He wants to put them on. Well, he lifted his uh, his element that he had. He did. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be different. Nothing, nothing wrong with the with the bug guard. I believe he wants to protect the paintwork on the front. That's why he yeah. did it. Oh. Well, for those just joining in, I don't want to over overpower their mics or anything like that, but feels until like they get inside, they won't be like able to October. hear us. So what I'm going to do is start pulling up some oh, questions here that I've been seeing pop up in the comments, and uh, we can move from that. And uh, when the guys talk, yeah. I'll make sure to dip in, give them a break, give them a chance to uh, chime in. Okay, so looking at what we got here, we got a good question here. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. From Carol Vermeeren, is G Technic and Coach Kemi coming to Europe? Uh, they're actually technically from the UK and Europe, uh, but if you mean to TRC Europe, which you follow up and say, uh, yeah, that's something that. Uh, You'd need to talk with them about, but uh, as far as I understand it, there's definitely uh, demand there. But of course, there there are many distributors in the uh, European region there, so might look into that if you need something today. But don't don't be afraid to let them know if uh, you want to let them know that they should carry. Uh, okay, what else do we have? We got Lars. Okay, just popping in to say hi. Lars, of course, is from Color Lock which uh, we will be getting into once we move indoors and uh, to the interior of this Sequoia. Oh, okay. Here's a good one from Umberto. Asking if we will remove the bug diffuser from the front of the truck. Now, I'm going to pass that information along to Nick so he can ask them out there and uh, see what their plans are there. Nick has just informed me that he actually just put that bug diffuser on the truck, so it is not coming off because it only just went on there. So that answers the question, Umberto. And uh, we got Rectangle here saying hi. <laughs> and Antonio's BD Supply Store saying, pop a chrome on the turntables. That's right. I'm here. I'm talking. These guys are outside doing the work. But, you know, sitting at this table talking to you guys is work, too. Uh, let's see. But, you know, I enjoy the work. I got to clarify that. <laughs> uh, that seems to be it for the YouTube comments coming in right now. However, I know I saw some Facebook comments. 
So while I wait for those to populate here in the field, I'm going to dip over to it on my other screen here, and let's see what's going on over there. Okay, there's some good ones coming in here. We got Ryan Goodwin saying, Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Followed up by Ian Musgrove asking the real questions here. Is that the new wash mitt you guys have been talking about? Well, you know, we kind of teased it here and there. Yes, they were uh, using it. That's still a prototype there, so that may not be the finished one, but at least you know it's out there. It's possible. We're working on it. Uh, we've got Steve Anderson here saying, what soap is in the foam cannon? Now, the guys informed me beforehand that we were going to use uh, Koshemi's GSF, Gentle Snow Foam. So if you're wondering about that foam, I believe that's what was in the canister. Looks like the guys are talking out there. Let's cut over to see what they're saying. When I smell certain bead maker, whatever it is, like when I smell the Koshemi stuff, it's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I was telling everybody before, I know we have been, been talking, that Coach Kemi uh, GSF, it smells so good. It's like, it's like that smell is intoxicating. Like when I smell it, like my mouth waters because it smells like a, like a candy, like, like a real candy. And um, it makes you really hungry. I want to find a candy that smells like that, but also tastes like that. And if you ever find it, let me know. But that's, that's awesome. awesome. So, so I just freak, freak, uh, freak, freak the, the wheels, wheels, power, power clean, clean again. again. Hit him, hit him with the foamer, foamer IK foam 12. 12. Levi's going in with the long bristle wheel brush. Um, basically just knocking out the faces. They're already pretty clean. And then from there, we're just going in. What do you, you want to pull it in? Or do you want to dry it up here? We can rinse. We can dry it out we, well, we can dry it out here, but we're working against the sun at that point. Yeah, let's, let's dry it in. There. So I think we we'll pull it in. Try to have everybody go inside in. That way we can hear everybody. Um, and what do you guys think we should use as a drying aid? I want to know what people in the comments want to see. Bee maker? Do they want to see CTV3? What do they want to see in the comments? Oh, no. <laughs> no. I'm going to do it on not specified yet, but why don't we mix things up and use a little CTV3? Spray down the... Then we're actually going to apply butter plastic. up here. Um, we can pull out some I mean, Doctor Doctor paint gloss. We can do G-Technics for detailer. Um, let us know what you guys want to see in the comments. I think we're going to use liquidators. What did you say? Stop talking? Sorry. <laughs> No, that's unrealistic. It can, we can do it. It is possible. I'm just not going to do it because I'm going to do something that's a little bit more fun. IK, IK new trigger sprayers, bead maker, blue bead maker. Oh yeah, there's that. There's actually big ball. Is he the only person watching? Because I feel like that's what somebody, somebody that the only person watching would say. Oh no, man. He's got a ton of money though. He gives, he, he comments on Instagram pictures. He like, I'm, I've seen him like, I've seen, I saw him give a guy a thousand bucks one time. Five thousand right on the spot. Couldn't believe it. It's crazy. Crazy guy. It is. It's, it's, it's amazing stuff. Um, okay, while well, Levi's rinsing, I'm actually going to go ahead inside and go press and go uh, pull some liquidators and uh, find what people use as a drying aid. What are the comments they gave? Cut mark. Cut mark. Cut mark.
Okay. Oh, this will be a fun one. I'm going to pull up Thanks, David Alfredo. Rommel here. <laughs> David Rommel wants to know, how do you pronounce, I say, Koshemi, Koshkemi. Uh, someone else will say it differently, but he wants to hear, you Yankees, try some German. So, what does Levi, what does Anthony say when they say, Koshemi or Koshkemi, however you want to say it. Some people just weren't made out for this stuff. I get it. A couple different ways depending on the area, or sorry, a couple different ways depending on the area or region of Germany that you are in. Uh, there's uh, Koch Chemi, Koch Chemi, Chemi. Chemi. There's a lot of different ways. We're basically calling it Ko Chemi. So, Ko and then the sh and then Chemi. So, we're kind of giving it a little uh, silent CH, so to speak. So, Ko Chemi is what so we're calling it. And that's kind of how we're trying to make it sound uh, the best way we can. So, sorry if I've, uh, you know, sounds weird for you guys, but that's how it's going. But I'm going to grab my bang. Ah, <laughs> oh, right back at it. So, as you can see, the wash bay works really well like this. Um, our internal wash bay, we do have a capture mat, which actually spend the time to clean out uh, and make sure that we get all the water drained appropriately. Um, having an outside one is nice because we can just let the sun dry all this out. Uh, if you're wondering more about this unit, uh, that's from our friends at Detail Plus. So, detailplus.com, you can get a hold of Duplessis. He uh, had that all manufactured and built for. Pretty rad. I think we're going to pull the car out. Wait, Levi, we need to spray the, spray the engine bay down. Oh, okay. Lightly. Just hit it with some water because we're going to motor plast it. Okay. I'm going to pass a little word on to Nick we here to ask here. the guys. They want to hear Levi say YOLO, which I feel is appropriate since he's holding the bang. It just seems like the thing Watch. to say. What's this? Yolo for what? Mission accomplished. Say yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I'm drinking the bangs. And we got Umberto Garcia here asking. Sorry, I've never installed one of the bug dirty. protectors, but I want to oh, ask, rinse it off. how difficult is it to install or later remove the bug diffuser slash protector to detail the vehicle? Actually, I should probably ask Nick that, because he's the one who installed it. See what's inside here? Oh, this is burning my, my arm. Right. Right. <laughs> really really slick. Slick. So, if this was like a real nice detailed job, I would actually let this stuff sit. I would do the underside of the hood. I would scrub it. I'd make sure everything was as clean as possible. That's if I was doing it for a customer. Since this is for Nick, I'm just going to rinse it off. Now we do have James Tech here commenting and uh, raising a good point, which is actually the lower third with the comment does occupy a good chunk of the lower part of the screen. So when it's up there, uh, it is covering a bit. But we move it away when the question's over so uh, that you can see everything that's going on. So there you go.
Oh, okay. Okay. Now the magic's gonna happen. We just want to show you what you did. What was your So I just sprayed some Power Clean, foamed it on there, and then uh, let it sit for a bit. I told him that I would have rather scrubbed it, made sure it was like actually clean before I did this. But because this is Nick's, we're doing it on the live. We kind of want to show you guys the power of what this product can do. So this is just a light foam of power clean only sitting dwelling for less than a minute yeah. and then rinsing it off okay. so that's where we're at so motor blast here um a little does go a long way but you can go pretty heavy with it it's pretty nice basically what it does is um it, it, it creates a hydrophilic coating um on all of your engine components so basically it's a preserver um it's going to protect your electrical stuff as well um it's basically it's where water is just sheeting off it just does not hold on to water so this is what i used on the um the, uh, the fender wells of my dodge ram and it's been and pretty fantastic. Um, the temperature resistance on this is insane, um, and this thing can last upwards of, of a year. And it and it makes like an elastomeric bond it's on pretty it. Pretty cool. So we're just gonna shake it up. I'm going to make sure this is right as well. Turn it on, dude. All right. So it has a, a little bit of a blue tracer in it, so you can see where you've applied it. So you can apply it to all plastic, all metal. Totally fine on paintwork. You can let it sit on paintwork. But you want to get well, it. not on like your exterior paintwork. Not your exterior paintwork, but so your mic drop. Uh, so you want to be able to while you're spraying it. Basically, the goal is it creates this uh, field around all your electrical components and stuff, and helps protect them from water. Which is kind of funny because you got to get get it wet to make it work. But uh, this chemical process allows it to create literally an elastomeric bond. So you're kind of layering a nice blanket of protection all over your electrical components and seals and hoses and all that stuff. Um, so it actually does protect everything uh, in the future, you know, from any damage, dust, water, any of that kind of stuff. It's really a crazy unique product. Let me see that. I'll get back angles. This kind of paint, the paint really fine. not. Yeah. not if you get it on your exterior, on that paintwork. Oh, I like, because this whole front here still got some plastics and stuff on it. I want to get, make sure that it also is coated and protected because there's some electric components and things. And we're gonna go up along this firewall here just to make sure we got some even coverage on everything. And as you can see, I'm kind of just trying to go from all different angles just to make sure we got uh, that appropriate coverage. We're even getting here in these headlight housings. Favorite color 365. What, what, what color? No, what color do you want to use? Oh, what color do I want to use? Oh, 365, um, right? 365. Gold. Gold sounds good. Okay, here you go. I think you used enough of this one. Yeah. I'm going to rinse it off now on the outside because. Uh, And yes, to those commenting who can't right, hear Anthony, we're aware his mic is a little bit out right now. It's because they're out of signal range right now, but we'll be working on that in the future. So not to worry, we'll take care. Well, I gotta so we did get a little bit of dirt on the body of the car, so that's why I'm rinsing it. Okay. Thank you, sir.
push. Got it, Jimmy? Hold on. Yeah, buddy. All right. right. So, you ready to dry this thing off? Grab our towels. I cannot. No. All right. Those guys are getting arranged, but now that we're inside the building, I, I can assure I you bang. the mics will be a much better range, and I believe the boys can hear me now. I'm up. Can you hear me? I haven't reset anything, so hopefully you guys can hear me all right. <laughs> I can hear, I can hear Levi finally. just fine. I can hear Dane kind of giggling in the background there. Let me get my headset working a little better there. There it is. Okay. All right, Dane, what's going on? All right. Well, it's nice to be back in contact with you guys. I know it's a little tricky with outside. We're a little out of range. But now that we're inside, away from the wind and all that, I think this is going to be a good show. We're just I'm building excited. on it. It's all a little bit of practice out here, yeah. but that's what these are for. We have a car to drive. It's inside. It'll be all right. It's ready, but it's ready to get dry. So what are we going to dry it with? Because we're not going to be doing any correction on this today. Oh, no. No, not today. Um, so I do have bead maker over there and a TR trigger sprayer. Okay. I can use trigger, trigger sprayer. sprayer. Um, um, I, have I have bead, bead maker, maker in the Psyche phone. Oh. Have you guys ever seen that yeah, you can use phone bead maker? So it's I think not impressive. Well, I think, you know, everybody knows God mode. That's where we put IK. We put the bead maker in an IK multi. Yeah. This is a foamer. I think this is almost Titan mode. I don't, it's, it's some type it's of above mode. God, so basically, I want to guess Titan. you get more smell, right? So it basically takes Beadmaker and makes it smell 10 times uh, crazier because it just activates everything. But um, you get a good dwell time out of it. I haven't done any testing to see, like, does this affect the way that, you know, the durability or anything like that. I haven't tested it. It's more of like a um, novelty way to apply. Well, we know it cures faster. We do know that. Because of the aeration of it, it uh, cures much quicker. And you do get some very even coverage, right? Yeah. But you can't keep running. you got to have, like, a second person because uh, this stuff <laughs> dries very fast when you do it this way. So that's pretty much the most I'm going to bite off right there. You grab a towel here. I got one right over here. Oh, you got oh, one already. I got one. I grabbed one of them. Ooh, this thing needed clayed. Could have used a clay. This is a very rough, rough car. How's add, it feel, that, though? add that to the list. Well, once I get past all the, all the overspray on it, it's fine. <laughs> then it's I'll, fine. I'll, I'll know, but it feels good. I mean, it's not like it doesn't feel bad. What's going to happen is people are going to see this and they're going to be like, we saw the rag company foam bead maker and everybody should do that now. And <laughs> that's not the case. Don't do that. Yeah, we've been just... foaming bead maker for a while. It's what I like to use sometimes at home. But uh, yeah, you got to make sure you go slow, you go panel at a time and you take your time with it because of how quick it, uh, it starts to cure. It will act very funny. Um, because of that. Oh, we've got an important question from here, as James you can see, it's Tech already started here. started to cure in that amount of time that we were working on it. You can see right in here, there's this like discoloration. 
Okay, guys, assuming you can hear me, ghosting. I've got a question from James Tech. Is it straight bead maker in the bottle, or is there water in the foamer as well? Straight bead maker. Straight bead maker. Boom. There you go. And if you've ever Ed. applied bead maker <laughs> and left it on the surface too long, it's basically what happens to when you foam it. Uh, so but, it fast. but it goes much quicker. So I waited a little too long on this back quarter panel. So we hope it'll dry out a little bit as it oh, settles. Yeah. Basically, you get that bead maker buildup, that look of yeah. the buildup almost instantaneously because it dries so much faster. Not dry, yeah. but cure. Or cures, yeah. The so there were a few more faster. questions, but they were more or less asking the same thing about dilution. Yeah, guys, it's straight bead maker in that bottle. So the only way it's really getting, quote unquote, diluted is the fact that they're putting it onto a wet surface. Let me back this out a little bit. Just. Oh, not too much. Yeah, this thing needs a polish. Bad. I think it needs to be clayed. Here, I'll not I'll let you know. Sure. I'm going to grab this other towel. Yeah, but just looking at it, you can see what quick work the bead maker, even in foamed form, made on the sides there. And uh, as they pointed out, yes, when you're foaming it, you do have to work faster. Yeah, the, the speed is really just because I feel like you are you already cause those monomers to flip once they're agitated or aerated. Well, you're forcing air into yeah. it. You're basically yeah, you accelerated the process. Right. So although it's fun and it makes the car smell really good, it's not as much fun when you got to work really fast. Well, and you get overspray of the foam. Well, and, everything. Yeah. Well, and it's not the most efficient way to do no. it anyway. No, you by are going to use less, but <laughs> um, it, it isn't more efficient in any way. Shape Ooh. or form. I got a question for you guys that's a classic. Everybody always wants to know. Will bead maker make a drying towel non-absorbent like some yeah. other sealants? Yeah, I will. <laughs> it's a sealant. Any sealant will make a drying towel. It doesn't have to be bead maker. Any sealant, a polymer sealant. You're sealing your paint. You're sealing your towel. I don't care whose manufacturer you're buying from, whose towels you're buying. It's going to happen to the best of them. You know, it could be a CarPro sealant and an auto fiber towel. It could be a, it could be PNS bead maker and it could be a microfiber madness towel. Heck, it could be turtle wax, ceramic sealant, or any of their spray sealants, and it could be Costco towels. I mean, they're all going to get sealed regardless because it's just the chemical nature of the product. Mm, absolutely true. So he didn't ask this question, but I'm going to ask the follow-up that I'm sure people are thinking is, well, what can you do to prevent that from happening? Wash your towels immediately. other towels back to life but we'll talk about that later <laughs> um oh follow up here we got luker here asking is the plan to correct the paint if so with nope. what how nope. about using the udos and i already knew the answer to that i just wanted to make sure i got asked in there for him yeah but, so uh, luker yeah, that's not happening <laughs> not today we're not uh today we're gonna work on the interior on this uh, oh i just put those in water uh so <laughs> We'll probably pull this up a little farther. This is kind of close. 
Well, let's find the keys here. Rams oh, on! Oh, we got Ram from Color Lock here. All right, I got Ram here on the horn. Hey, Ram, Ram how's it going, man. bud? What's happening? How are you guys? <laughs> What's, on, What's up, Wonderful. buddy? How are you, man? Well, Good. Uh, I've been watching to... you guys uh, crack away at this uh, Toyota in the background, so good going. You've been watching us struggle <laughs> is what you've been doing. Don't lie. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, I thought no. you did the magic with the beat maker there earlier. Foam yeah. I've never seen maker. that. A foam and beat maker. Man, that's... Um, I mean, I'm no detailer, but I've never seen that happen before, so... It's <laughs> most people they don't even can foam it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, Ram, so it's been a little bit of an experiment today. Had some audio issues here and there. That's just part of life, you know. You got you to gotta do what you got to do, and that's why we're doing this now is to kind of work out the kinks and make our system better. So that's, uh, that's, that's what that today's cool. all about. Wow. But you, coming in from well across the pond there, uh, you seem loud and mm -hmm. clear, so we can hear you just fine this week. So uh, at any rate, we're going to yeah. use some color lock products on the interior of this truck. Uh, Levi, you want to tell them what we're using today? Uh, well, well, if the boys, boys can uh, bounce, bounce back, back to the, the uh, products, uh, products on the table here. Table. Jimmy's just down and close uh, here. But, Ram, we're going to... So uh -huh. this is a uh, Sequoia that Nick bought, and uh, yeah. we're going to use it to tow a trailer, do some camping, all that stuff. But the leather is filthy. So we've got a couple bottles of mild cleaner. We've mm -hmm. got the uh, Color Lock Rag Company collab brush. And we're going to be using conditioner. Nice. Okay. On this one. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to tell some of the folks at home as to why we're using the mild leather cleaner on uh, some of this old tan Toyota leather and, and then why we're going to be using the conditioner specifically. Yeah. So, I mean, um, the mild leather cleaner is the. The, the mildest form of leather cleaner that we that we produce just as the name suggests right and unless unless you've got an interior that's very filthy and grubby you really want to just stick to the mildest form of cleaner right yeah. um, also to do with the pH value of leather you know so um, leather's pH value is about four four and a half the mild leather cleaner has a pH of about five so it's a very pH balanced cleaner um, and obviously when you use it with the brush, that allows you to really get into the grains and, you know, clean it very, very well. So um, in most cases, I'd always start with a mild leather cleaner and then work my way up from, from there. Okay. So, yeah, so that's, that's one of the biggest things. So we, so we carry the heavy and, I don't know what camera I'm on here, but uh, we carry the heavy and the mild. And like Ram said, mm -hmm. the, the heavy is there for when you can't get any, uh, you know, you can't get this, the surface clean uh, with just mild. So you can bump up to the heavy, or strong, I should say, sorry, strong cleaner. Um, that way you can uh, really break down uh, all that dirt, the skin, the oils, the fat, all that stuff that's just sitting on top of the leather, the salts, uh, that's it. all that kind of stuff. And so once that's clean, it, you. so one thing I, I think a lot of people don't seem to realize or understand about leather is like, um, you know, one thing Ram taught me and, and Lars that matter is, uh, you know, when we're cleaning the leather seats, our goal is to bring it back to the natural, uh, or neutral pH of that leather. So, uh, that mm -hmm. actually helps the leather live longer. Um, and a lot of yeah. people don't, don't know that. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So, um, basically, you know, when you, when you clean and you apply a care product and essentially you're trying to, you, you are altering the pH value of, of the surface as well once it's cleaned. And, what, and the product that you use affects it greatly. So if you use a higher pH value product, of course, that's going to clean it. Um, but at the same time, if you consist consistently keep doing that, that's just going to degrade um, the leather in the long run. It's not something you'll see it in the, in the immediate aftermath of, of, of cleaning it, but you know it's just a long-term effect. So of course, if you want to keep your leather looking good, you know, feeling good for the, the longest period of time and you want to get a lot of use out of it, um, then, then just use, use the mildest form of cleaner um, and, of course, apply a conditioner. Um, that, again, depends on the age of the leather. So um, I don't know if, if, if that's clear for um, a lot of people who watch because sometimes a lot of people go, well, you've got so many different products for leather. Yeah. Which yeah. one's good for me, right? 
Should I yeah. use the conditioner? Should I use a sealant? Should I use a wax? Um, which one should I go for? So on this, because it's a, I think it's an O2. Uh, yeah, it's an O2. Right. Okay, so it's an O2, the guys are saying. So um, the, the leather is, uh, is, gosh, almost 20 years old, um, but it's in mm -hmm. good shape. So that's why we're using the conditioner to help protect uh, and condition that leather. Um, it's not, you know, dry or cracked. I mean, the people that own this took very good care of uh, this leather. And so I don't know what camera I'm on now. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, so it's so we'll, we, we're going to use the conditioner. Now, if we wanted to use the sealant, we could. However, the sealant mm -hmm. is more designed for some of the newer, like a, a couple years old leather. Yeah. Yeah, because you're absolutely right. So, so conditioner is, is you know, it's a UV protector. It's got antioxidants. It keeps the leather soft and supple. So for something that's sort of 18 years old, but if it's in good condition, and especially if it's got a sort of a, a satin finish, then yeah. the conditioner is ideal for it, right? Yeah. You can leave that, and that will just, you know, keep it soft, keep it supple, maintain that suppleness that you need um, in a car that old. Um, I mean, you can apply the sealant as well to this, but I'd probably restrict it just to the, to the main driver's seat bolster right. and the passenger seat you know those areas you can just apply the, the high traffic uh, and, areas yeah and and that little area that we're f focusing on now i mean and then it's up to you how how far you want to take it you know do you want to fill those cracks do you want to sort of recolor those areas that's entirely down to you yeah so that's that's kind of this you know there's just going through this leather there's you know there's looks like there's an ink stain here um mm -hmm. they uh you know, there's some shiny spots on the leather, but nothing bad. Um, and there is some oh, cool. starting to be some cracking, um, not bad cracking, but discoloration where the pigment is starting to break uh, from the yeah. leather. And looks like there was some chewing gum at one point uh, here on the leather as well um, <laughs> that has worked its way into the leather. So um, yeah. it's kind of so it's the area where you've said about the ink stains, Levi. Yeah, the, the mild cleaner may not work very well just in removing that particular stain. So that's in that area, you may have to use a stronger, stronger product. Yeah, so we'll we'll probably switch to the to the strong cleaner and uh, see what we can get out of that. Same with the uh, the glue or the the gum here. Uh, we yeah. should be able to hopefully get that out of there too. Um, but I'm I'm really amazed uh, for the good as good a condition and how not discolored this leather is. That's probably the craziest thing about it. Sure. So good job, was, Nick. Sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm still thinking that seat was the driver's seat. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, <laughs> like, yeah, you're a little yeah. Uh, turned around. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 so yeah. this I, I, is the driver's seat, <laughs> and that, that is the passenger seat. I get that seat. now. That's, that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right. but either way, what we'll probably do is because uh, it'll, it, right now Nick, he, you know, Nick is a family of three, so it's him and his wife and then their young daughter. Uh, so we'll, we'll most likely, after we've protected all this, we'll, we may put a coat of the sealant on top just for fun um, on these two seats. And then uh, on the back, maybe where the car seat goes, uh, just for some added protection, uh, you know, yeah. we'll put something on there too, just to protect all of that. But we are gonna go cool. with the protector for the majority of this, um, or the conditioner. Yeah. Um, that way we have that, uh, we'll bring back this 18 year old leather. Uh, and make Brilliant. it soft. Um, so. I don't know if you want to do something to the steering wheel. How's things wheel, going over there? Fine? Things, things are good. Things are good. Obviously, you know, um, this time of the year, usually I'm sort of running around frantically trying to get set up for SEMA, trying to get organized. Um, but obviously, um, things are a little different this year. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a little peaceful. But at the same time, we're still trying to do a lot of things you know we're, we're, we're busy you know um unbelievably busy which is which is good but i'd much rather um uh, be across there and and you know do the real SEMA than yeah and the virtual stuff that we've got a we've got planned cool yeah it's uh it's definitely uh much quieter this year for all of us i think oh, yeah I'm just gonna keep going all right so <laughs> i was gonna say were you gonna go ahead the steering wheel as well or is that something that you're gonna let go I couldn't hear you there. Say it again. Uh, sorry. Is that, um, are you going to attack the steering wheel as well with, um, with the cleaner? Or yeah, or it is a leather wrapped steering wheel as well. So we'll probably get that all yeah. cleaned up and make sure that looks as, as good as it can. Um, 
Cool. But yeah, for everybody at home, here we go. So we've got the mild cleaner and the brush. A little bit on there. Something I like about that brush, so that, that Colab brush that we've got, that's actually different to the, it's slightly different to the color lock brush. Yeah, um, it's a little bigger. Sense, it's slightly wider and a little bit bigger as well. So I think it offers a better grip overall, um, but it's still sort of small enough to get into, you know, sort of intricate areas and, 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 and clean. So it still offers the same functionality, but, you know, yeah. gives you a better grip. I yeah, I would say that the uh, TRC version is re really good. It's designed kind of for Levi's hands, and then the original version is more designed for Anthony's hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave people uh, to make their conclusions based on that, Dane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good analogy, Dane. I like that. <laughs> Just want to give people a nice frame of reference, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if anybody has uh, a handle on some more lights, but maybe if you cast some light in there, you could get it from the other side and that'd make it a little yeah, easier well, to see uh, some of the imperfections. Let me see if I can grab a, maybe like a little light and we'll see if we can get a, get a yeah. better idea here for you. Um, might just grab one of the scan grip lights and That would also work. Yeah, Lars was meant to join as well. I don't know where he is. <laughs> well, he's going to go find one of those scan grips, bring it on over. Light up the area, he can kind of point out what we were talking about before. Yeah, that ought to do it. So, all right. Dual wield. <laughs> well, one of the great things about the scan grips is they're, you can Magnetic. magnetize them. Yeah. So. Oh, that's not going to make it. There we go. A little better. Yeah, that ought right. to do it. So, that should help out, Dane, I think. Yeah, as long as nobody bumps it, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, so, all right. So, as you can see, we've got it got it on the surface here. And uh, already we can see it's it's gotten a lot of that dirt out of the grain, but there still is a bunch of dirt still in the system. So, I may actually just switch over to... These seats are a little dirtier than I thought they'd be, so we may switch over to Strong just to see if we can get mm. a little more cleaning capability out of this seat yeah. here. Now, Ram, you would normally recommend, as we talked about before, always going with the less aggressive method first. And yeah. And then working your way up if it's necessary. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely, because you don't know how much clear coat there is on the surface as well. So, right. you know, if you start with a stronger base product, you might end up removing a lot of the the paint layer so to avoid all of that and creating a bigger issue for yourself it's yes. best you just start with the least um strong product um and then just work your way up it's easier that way um actually works works well you know and, yeah, and, and so try and avoid spraying the product directly onto the onto the leather as well that's another thing that um, um sometimes you don't know if if you leave the product to dwell on the surface a little bit longer you get sort of spots on right. there as well so yeah, and that's Strong something where is, it's kind it's of a case-by-case well. case scenario. If you're dealing with some material where you're like, you don't know it that well, you haven't dealt on it, dealt with it before, better safe than sorry again. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah so I got the Strong Cleaner out. Um, that's the refill, but I couldn't find the bottle. And I remember we hit ah. it because it's a, uh, well, let's just say this label's gotten dirty. It doesn't look as pretty on camera, so... Apologies, everybody. I'm just gonna gonna give it a wipe down, clean it all off. But uh, basically, we got enough in there. But we've got this refill. If we need to, we just pour it here into the foaming bottle, and uh, we're good to go. All Another right. Another good question for Levi here. Where are your gloves? You're working with chemicals. Well, that's the fun thing is these are actually pretty safe chemicals. So that is also true. Yeah, I don't have to. The water-based, yeah, they're water-based products, and you know, uh, not harmful at all. So um, yeah, we're we're not talking fact, about when, when, acids when I'm or anything. Interiors and if, when I wear gloves, um, it actually stops me from um, to working very well. I usually find that things just slide out of my hand very quickly. That's just mm. me, right? I'm not saying. Yeah. That. 
What I like is these almost have nice, just... like a, on your hands, they have a softening, you know, they, they, your skin's softer, it doesn't dry out your skin. Um, when I'm using the color lock products on leather, I actually don't wear gloves. If I'm using like something else on door panels, plastic, all that kind of stuff, then, then yes, I do wear gloves just because sometimes those all-purpose cleaners and things like that are a lot more... Uh, you those know, can get nasty. Either side of the pH scale. So, uh, yeah. but these are, these actually make my hands feel a lot better when I'm done using them. Hmm. I read a thing or two about your hands earlier, Levi. What, Ram? One of the posts that you guys put out. Was, was that something to do with your hands? You got it tested, or? Oh yeah. So I went to the. Your, I went to arm, the. Sorry, not your hands. Yeah. So I went to the orthopedist. Uh, yesterday because uh well my shoulder hurts my elbows hurt um my hands uh, you know i do have arthritis in them already and so uh parts of me are starting to hurt more and more and so i thought well better go see the orthopedist now i i put off getting shoulder surgery uh when i first started my shop because i was the only employee (laughs) And the doctor said, after your surgery, you can't work for six, you can't use your arm in the capacity that you've been using it for six months uh, while you're in therapy oh. and healing and stuff. Um, so I said, well, I can't do that. So I tried to do yeah. as much physical therapy as I could and cortisone shots and all that kind of stuff just to push off the surgery. And then I sold the business and came here. And uh, for all intents and purposes, it's been a lot lighter and easier. However, the years, the five years that I've been here have caught up to me finally. And so uh, that's kind of the thing. So now, uh, you know, yeah. the, the pain's back and the doctor's saying, uh. you, you should do surgery. Um, so I'm thinking maybe next year I'll probably do that or um, we'll see. So that's, that's what's up. But I hear, I hear so many detailers complaining about aches, like body aches, back aches and things like that. that I've always almost thought of telling you guys that maybe you should hook up with a yoga instructor and you know get <laughs> yeah, in on I, it, one of your TRC sessions and yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> well, a novel idea. Yeah, my <laughs> sister does uh, eccentrics, uh, which is a form of classical stretching, and uh, she always tells me you should start taking my classes. They're good for your joints, and she sends me videos of folks who have. Classical. Classical. I thought you said classical. Yeah, stretching. classical stretching. But she's always like sh- showing me videos of guys that have had really bad joints and uh, mobility issues, and and so I don't know. Maybe I may have to swallow my pride and listen to my little sister and take one of her classes. So <laughs> it probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Probably would hurt for a little while. But well, I mean, it might literally <laughs> hurt. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might actually hurt. So. In the long run, though, it'd be worth it. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys hear Anthony? No, it's not working. Okay. Oh, no. Your mic's not hooked up, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just catching residual off of your mic, Levi, from him. Um, oh, I got Yoshi here in the comments asking, I found that go? the clear coat on Toyota and Lexus seats is not as durable as most no, other no. cars. Do you, how do you find that to be uh, the case, Ram, or do you think otherwise? Yeah. Um. I've not been able to, to tell um, the oh, difference you know. between um, sort of the clear no, coat between okay. vehicles. Um, I think a lot of it is down to how it's used. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've worked on has been used stuff. And um, uh, I mean, I've seen very new, like almost new, a nine month old BMW with dye transfer issues on there bolsters Ooh. starting to get scuffed already and that's also on Range Rovers um, you know those are two cars that are quite common here um, you know but not so much on Toyotas um, you know I have to say okay so I'm surprised uh, um, I want to ask Yoshi were, were they new cars or um, did he buy them new and experience that in, in the first few months or was that something that you yeah I honestly secondhand? don't know if Yoshi is talking about new or old cars in that case and actually I'm picking up a little bit of leave or Anthony on the mic there so uh, he, he's he's popping in in and out just occasionally there you can catch glimpses of a conversation but uh, yeah oh, no here's what's going on on the seat Levi fill us in well so uh, I was just moving my color lock mask here 
What good product <laughs> man was? Who would have thought, right? Um, so, uh, yeah. So, I've, so I've cleaned, cleaned the seat, and uh, we went over the whole thing with Strong, and uh, it's still damp, but uh, you can see where some of the cracks and stuff still do have a lot of dirt. But that actually might just be the cracking. Uh, we can't like get past that. It's just yeah. the shadowing inside the cracking. So um, there's still some spots. You know, it looks like this part of the seat was probably repaired because I started getting color coming up mm -hmm. um, right here. Um, down here, it's yeah. got some black still that needs to be worked out a little bit. So probably try and scrub this out. I might switch to mild so that I'm not taking anything off. Um, and then we got to do the rest of the seats. We got a lot of seats. Anthony, you should grab a brush. There's one right over there. Absolutely. And get in oh, here yeah. and start cleaning because I don't want to do this all myself. You want me to dive I was going to say, it's a crazy big I want you to jump in, <laughs> jump in, do a do cannonball, a bit, do a little bit yeah. of some swimming and some leather. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, at TRC, in. we're about teamwork here. We so, are about teamwork. Yeah. But I'm going to take off my hoodie because I'm getting a strong cleaner hot. and like a foam spray here. or something, Anthony. You might be okay. All right. So I'm going to grab a brush myself. Grab a little bit of strong cleaner. Wow, you can really tell that it's bringing back a lot of well, that. We're um, we may have to refill that strong because it's getting a little low. Hmm. So, oh. <laughs> when you fill up that IK foam sprayer, Anthony, and just spray the strong cleaner all over the seats. That's also <laughs> an option. <laughs> we could, we could yeah, do quicker that. way to get it done. <laughs> ah. Anthony being all precise. You know, maybe if we weren't all talking over this, it could just be like a live ASMR session of just cleaning leather seats. Maybe maybe that's a thing that we just do someday. <laughs> <laughs> but not today. I feel like talking, don't you? That day is not yeah. today. <laughs> I, I was just saying, I'm going to get their hopes up in the comments, and then just kind of dash them right away. Sorry, still got to hear my voice. Um, no, but uh, using the Drago's there, because I know people always ask, what products are you using? So the towel in question here is actually the Drago, which, quick note, Levi, what makes a Drago special? Um, well, it's kind of, so I'll just say it. I'm a fan of edge towels. I like the body that those towels have. I like the, uh, the kind of uh, rigidity that the towel is uh, kind of known for. Um, in terms of like, it holds a shape. So when you fold it, you have a towel that still has that because of this edge uh, allows you to keep a, um, a little more force on the towel. Yeah. So when you're wiping, it, it gives it structure, uh, gives it a little structure. And uh, so, but it's a 365 GSM towel, 7030 with a 7030 suede edge. Uh, so it's also absorbent, it's soft. And I think these are like the perfect weight, weight for just about every job. And the reason we uh, kind of went and created this is we used to carry a towel a long time ago that was a Korean version of a uh, kind of a early version of a Drago, but it was known as the Split Purple Nality. It was a great towel, very plush towel. And once there was a, let's just call it a factory mistake, I ended up buying up the remaining stock of that factory mistake from Jeff it was one of my first big purchases to the rag company. And uh, we called it Levi's Purple Towel and I used it <laughs> exclusively in my shop. And when I got back to, uh, when I came here to the rag company, it was one of those towels that I just really liked using. And so it was like, how do we fix that? How do we recreate that? So that's where we started working on the Drago uh, to create a 365 GSM 7030 blend towel with a, uh, a nice edge on it. And the reason was we had an old silk edge on the old towels uh, but on the new, when we did the Drago, uh, we did that suede. And so this is my favorite towel. It's a towel I use um, for almost everything. Interior, paint, windows, uh, wheels. It's a do-everything towel. And I joke that if you could buy only one towel from the rag company to do all your jobs, it's a Drago. It is, Drago it is kind of the do-it-all towel, and there's a reason Levi is behind the design of that one. So you can thank him for that, but if you like to detail, like, Levi does, then uh, I would say that's the right fit. Now let's cut back to the action on the seats there. How's that looking? We're scrubbing, oh. Dane. We're scrubbing. Nice. Well, while you guys are scrubbing, I do have a series of comments here. I'll go ahead and dip into those. 
No, Levi. <laughs> Anthony, what are you doing over there? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll let Anthony no, no, have a second. So, so, do you like to apply it to the brush? Yeah. Or do you like to just throw? Depends on how dirty the seat <laughs> is. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> I got Ram over here shaking his head at Anthony. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know how I didn't. So I am asking because other people might ask, can I apply it straight to the seat? Do I have to apply it to the brush? That wouldn't you be know, Ram's first recommendation. Out, do I need but... to be adding more? <laughs> so the safe option would be to get some on the brush and then scrub it evenly. The the downside of spraying spraying the product directly onto the surface is that especially if you let it dwell on there for, let's say, a minute. If, you, if someone calls you, something happens, and you s step away from that, or you have to step away, like yeah. by the time you come back and clean that, that area will have stained, especially mm, okay. if strong clean. But I think on this case, especially here, you may not see it because you, you sprayed it, but then very quickly started scrubbing. Yeah, so. they're, they're on top of it. We minimize the distractions here. But yeah, you're so totally you're right, like in an actual to shop setting. If you spray it not Levi, and leave it, there's a chance of staining. You could try and spray if you, it on If more. you just leave it, you walk away, and then you come back like five minutes later, ten minutes later, that's a real, okay, that's an gotcha. issue. So that's Specifically with the that. strong cleaner. So that's yes. just something to be aware of. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, yeah, listen to what uh, these guys have to say, but if you see them doing something that looks a little weird, call them on it. Ask them before you just go and do what they do. <laughs> uh, so we got a bunch of people commenting about various uh, ailments here, Levi, when it comes to uh, muscles and tendons and all that stuff. So uh, all repetitive need strain to injuries. All fish oils is what you need to be doing. Well, I imagine the fish oils would help. I talked about that on the podcast. I wasn't kidding, people. <laughs> Start taking fish oils. They're fantastic for your joints and overall health and well-being. <laughs> okay, so Yoshi so clarified. Saying, Yoshi clarified what he meant about the uh, Toyota mm. leather. He okay. specified mm. that older Toyotas, like in the late '90s and early 2000s, like that Sequoia, he found that the bolsters on newer Toyotas do not crack as quickly, uh, given that okay. newer meaning 10 years old versus 20 year, like the '90s, 2000s. Uh, so, so yeah, Nick got the good leather, is what he's saying. It might very well be. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I think uh, I think that's an observation. Um, I've I've not owned Toyotas, not worked on Toyotas as much, so you know, um, it, it is entirely possible. You know, the systems have changed. The top coats that they spray now are different to what they were spraying and were using in the past. So that could also uh, it could be down to that too. Yeah, no, that could definitely have an effect it's pretty there. Good man. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just a bunch of folks here asking, like James Tech saying, uh, Levi, find a good chiropractor. It helped me greatly as a detailer. I had many bouts with tendonitis in wrist and elbow. Cairo helped keep me tuned up. Stay yeah, healthy. Yeah, so I'm past that now. Uh, yeah. Cairo Health helped me for about the first 10 years of my detailing career. Uh, yeah, Levi's pretty am, uh, I'm, I'm run far ragged. advanced. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I have been putting off surgery for the better part of almost a decade. Um, and so for the last, you know, for the first probably 15 years of my career, I did a lot of chiropractic stuff just to try and keep myself in. I had a massage therapist that I would work on and I tried to take as good a care of my body as I could. However, the uh, kind of caught up with me. So, and now it's mostly calcium deposits and... Uh, bone spurs and things of that nature that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and take care of some of it with cortisone and physical therapy. I've had lots of cortisone shots, but, uh, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't keep putting it off. We'll just put it that way. So sure. And uh, now we have Lars joining us here in the chat, so to speak. Who? Uh, yeah. No. Hey, Lars. How's it going, man? Lars. Nice hoodie. Lars. Yeah, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, no, we're cleaning some leather. So, for people who are not familiar, Lars, remind the folks at home your your responsibility, what what you're in charge of, who you are. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Lars from from Leda Centrum, the company who produces the Colorlock products, and um, yeah, I do uh, finally everything in the company. So, <laughs> Lars is the boss. He's the big boss man. Yeah, he's the boss man. Over at Keller Lock, which, in case you're just now joining us, which it appears is about uh, about 190 people watching right now, uh, looks like they're from Color Lock, so that's what we're using on these seats. 
Um, but have you moved from the uh, regular cleaner to the stronger cleaner, or what? So what are you mild, using right now? Yeah, I'm using mild. Anthony's still running with strong. Okay. Um, I'm kind of going over, hitting some of the spots uh, that uh, I need to hit again. So. Okay. Fair okay. enough. So I can keep my earpiece in. Oh, and I also wanted to point out, we got a comment here from JWL saying, Howdy, big thumbs up to TRC for featuring Noel in this week's Wash Wednesday, which came out earlier this morning. Found his yeah. story to be truly inspirational. Uh, Anthony's acting, on the other hand, uh, not very convincing when uh, he was told the tunnel wash is no trouble and he, he kept a straight face. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. I can't hide my emotions very well when it comes to that kind of stuff, guys. Ah, well. <laughs> Just is what it is. <laughs> well, Lars, we've had uh, we've had Ram on here giving us little updates on certain stuff. People have been asking questions, so feel free to chime in when we're talking. But we were basically, you know, talk, we went through, talked about the leather and what's all in it, and uh, Anthony's trying to crush Jimmy back there on the seat. He's doing good. <laughs> uh, pennies? <laughs> Oh, wow, look at that. Already making <laughs> money. Depending for your thoughts. All right. Already making money, right? The way Very I like nice. it. <laughs> I don't know if that's the approved. Lars, are you seeing this? I don't know if that's the approved way to apply. <laughs> I think it works <laughs> good. <laughs> Draw <a> cleaner. <laughs> it seems excessive. It. Oh, we, we've spoken about it, but I think. Um, <laughs> Most people that's always talk about it. I think giving it all. So. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody's just going to watch Anthony in silence and pay very close attention to how he does this. <laughs> Definitely don't want to make it awkward. Just, you know, act like nobody's watching. I'm ready to condition these bad boys. Are we using the conditioner or the sealant? We're using the conditioner, conditioner right? Because it's this and so, is 18 year old leather. Now, one thing I want to talk about really quick, and this is something that Lars and Ram can chime in, because people are really getting um, really focused on the elephant leather preserver, right? And so they see that within our line, they say, "Can I put elephant leather preserver on that? 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 Like, could I put it on these seats?" And we've told people that you want to put the conditioner on these seats and that elephant leather preserver is for old leather, right? And so, Ram, if you want to yeah. chime in and kind of talk about the difference between that old leather and why or it Lars. needs, um, or Lars, or why it needs that elephant leather preserver, I think that that would be super helpful for people wanting to know more. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Lars, you want to take this one? No, I can take this one. So I can start yeah. with leather shield. So um, I just have to... To check that I get a bit of sound here. I forgot my my head my headset in the company and I'm home now. So okay, so start with leather shield. Leather shield is um, the, I, this is not a it's not a conditioner. It's not a care product. It's a product who who's who sealant or the leather sealant. It's a sealant product. So it's more um, a safety product for the surface. And we recommend to use this from zero age to three years. And after three years, um, move to, to the leather conditioner and use leather so conditioner just, from, from just stop three for a second, Lars. So he's ta Lars is talking about this, the color lock sealant. That's what he's talking about at the moment. Color lock sealant, yes. And next he's talking about, oh. he's, he's just getting ready to talk on to conditioner. So go ahead. The conditioner. So leather sealant, zero to three, leather conditioner from three up to eight till twelve years, and after this, leather is what we say old, and then you move to elephant. There's some things um, to to look after when it's a, when it's a convertible. We say do it earlier, so you can you can move. Um, in, after three years to elephant when you have a convertible and um, also when you have a leather what feels after eight years um, very hard and you have to we saw that we're not going to pretend we didn't see that we totally <laughs> saw that <laughs> I hope the bottle was open and you use a lot of product <laughs> Yeah, Lar Lars isn't mad. He's just going to make you buy another one. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Lars, sorry. if I'm doing Continue. this right. So, um, I have my conditioner here. I have my 365. Uh, I'm, so, I'm pinging my echo in my ear, so it's making me talk slower. Um, so, uh, I'm, a, I'm applying 
couple drops to this and I'm working it in with the towel. And now is that the right way to do this or should I be using an applicator instead? You can use the applicator as well. And um, the, the, what is important is that you, um, a thin, thin is more, so don't, okay. don't put don't, too don't much. Don't, okay, it. so don't put too much. Okay, thin okay, gotcha. is fine, so as you do it right now, it's completely correct. That looks fine. Okay. And so if I see any excess or any, any wet spots or anything like that, should I go back over it with the towel to, to fix those high spots? No, you can polish with this, of course. Okay, okay. Buff it off, okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is looking really, really good. Yeah. I'm really happy with I how mean, you do it very, out. very proper. So <laughs> when the most people do a little bit more product in the, in the towel, and okay. then just wipe it over it. And uh, if you see some stripes and you polish out as you polish it, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to make the little bit go a long way. That's how a real detail I do, I, I think. Because eh, right? th this yeah. size bottle yeah, right I mean, here, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing that this is going to last me how many cars? Four, five, six cars, Lars? This little bottle yeah, up to conditioner? A, a, yeah, up Four to five cars, so. Four to five cars. I mean, okay. in Europe, maybe six, and in the U.S., maybe four. And so, and what I like about this conditioner, right, compared to other conditioners that I've used, and so um, a lot of other conditioners are thicker, right? And so, and Lars has explained the difference between certain solvents before um, within conditioners and whatnot. And so, um, with other conditioners that I've used, they've been really, really thick. I'm talking, like, really thick. And so, when you go to spread them on, the other big thing, too, is that, they don't spread on clear. And so when I spread these things on, they spread on as like a white milky substance. And when they hit like Alicantara or they hit like adjacent fabrics or anything like that, now I have to deal with this white residue, this white greasy residue that is now in my fabrics. And what I like about this is this spreads so thinly and so clearly, I feel like I could take my towel with an edge like this, go right up to a line and, and cut that line in, right? And so I'll have the leather conditioned, right? And if I hit the Alicantara, if I hit the fabric, I'm not super worried about it because it's going on clear, but it's much better than having to deal with things turning white, right? Or things turning brown or whatever color um, leather conditioner you're using. But I'm just trying to explain that this, I can be really accurate with it with a towel, um, probably more accurate than I would be with an applicator, in my opinion. Yeah. The only thing yeah, is when you're working on one panel at a time as well, so. In what sorry, that? sorry, carry on. I was saying that the other good thing is that you're working on one panel at a time, which is something that we always tell people, you know, especially when they're cleaning, because the tendency to work when you're cleaning a, a leather seat is just to uh, just go at it, you know, in a slightly half a said manner. But it, if you work on one panel at a time, you know, yeah. and work on that one section, that makes it easier for you to focus on cleaning it very well and making sure that you've covered every area. Well, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm just looking at this as kind of like a puzzle, right? I'm just piecing things together as I'm going. So when I look at this, I'm just saying, well, this is easy enough. My, there's one section, two section, three section, four section, five sections right there, instead of taking the product and rubbing it all over. And so I feel like I'm getting a more even application doing it this way, because I'm not trying to extend mm -hmm. product that is really getting too thin or maybe it's getting too thick and I'm getting too much of a buildup and being able to apply the same amount of product to every panel so everything looks really universal and clean. And it's feeling really, really good. I'm probably not supposed to be putting my greasy hands over it this soon, but it just, it feels really good. No, you've got, you've got a cleaner on your hands. You're good. Okay, good, good. Yeah, it's just all the same stuff going right back on. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as before and after, obviously the people at home can't feel the seat for you. So how would you describe how it felt before versus how it feels now? And you just so, back of the hand kind of thing. In my opinion, right, and this is going to sound like the most played thing in the world, right? <laughs> it feels like what new leather w w would feel like, right? It it has that, it's a, it's a matte feel, right? It's not a greasy feel it's it's not like when I, I don't have any residue coming up off my hands and it feels very flat right and what I also like too is that it feels firm and it feels really really nice uh, firm in the sense that it still feels supple but meaning that I just feel it just I don't know it just feels like it kind of uh, brought new life to it I'm guessing that's probably the cleaning process as well because it removed all those old oils um, but it, it feels like what leather should feel like new 
and this is the feel that I like. This is the feel and look that I like. And I've used a ton of greasy uh, dressings and wipes and all of that. Like my old go-to when I was a kid, I love the uh, Meguiar's leather wipes, right? Ooh. Remember those leather oh, yeah. wipes? Yeah. Yeah. And you would take one of those things out and... You know, when you could see it dripping, right? You just like, smear it on like, there. And, oh, yeah. yeah. It was mostly baby oil. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to slide right off those seats. <laughs> and so I would take those little leather conditioning wipes, and I would go through, and I have to be really accurate because I didn't want to get it on everything else. But the shine that that left behind was just so over the top. It was just extremely shiny, and it didn't look right, right? Mm. It didn't look like how it would new. It looked very um, armor all ish. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wasn't a fan of that. And I kind of grew to appreciate the look of natural leather, uh, and more of a matte finish leather over that look, the older I got and the more into detailing I got, because, you know, like, you know, a lot of old school guys, man, they still like armor all, they still like really shiny leather mm -hmm. that, that shows them that it's been treated or it's been clean. Um, and now it's kind of reeducating people to let them know that you could have a coated, protected, um, good looking interior without all that extra oil. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to point out one quick thing here to the color log team because JWL right, here so left a very nice comment. Over here, Jimmy. So this is that ink stain we were talking about. Let's see if I can get a light on there mm -hmm. a little better. Move this seat. I'm not sure Levi could hear me, but uh, I, I was going to read off a nice sorry. comment here really quick for the Color Lock guys. J JWL here says, To the Color Lock team, I remember when you first came on John's Forensic Detailing channel two years ago or so. I decided to give the products a go, and I've never looked back. Always get great results. Clapping emoji. So uh, shout out, oh. Ram and Lars. He wanted to say thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's nice to, yeah, it's nice to hear that. It. That's what we want, though. And then Umberto yeah, here. Who's been using it for two years because <laughs> I think that's a decent enough timeline for someone to use the product and come back and say, yes, I've, I've yeah. tried it over a certain length of time and I'm still getting good results. So. Yeah, it's not like they're in the honeymoon period and it's all just gone away or anything like that. They really do like yeah. them. So that's, that's what you're looking for is the long-term use. But uh, Humberto here said, uh, even Ram appears in the opening of the Forensic Detailing channel with Sir John. So yeah, apparently, does. Ram, you're still in his intro Sir there. John, <laughs> I, I met Sir John at some, some point um, during, during lockdown, or not during lockdown, just when it all opened up. Um, and and he, he, he mentioned that, you know, I actually feature on his channel more than him him or anyone else, for that matter. Because <laughs> he, for some, somehow he's managed to put a clip on me on there. So, yeah. Oh, well. Eh, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh. So here's the. Oh, we got a camera. Anybody? Yep. Can, just, can you see? <laughs> okay. So Jimmy uh, just set the camera right here. Nice, uh, great shot. He's climbing back into the back of the car. But basically, so when we were doing our assessment, so I still got the back of this seat to clean, and we still got this whole back. It's got three rows, which is a lot of seats. Um, so. We got a lot to clean, but this is a some sort of ink stain that you can see. And there was another one right here. I did a little test spot with the mild cleaner, but I thought I'd show you just to make sure. I think we can get this out just with uh, the mild leather cleaner uh, on these seats. Nate, you got a shot there? Okay. So Nate's camera has um, got the dark, uh, better view here. Dark point of the stain, or what is it? It's a it's an ink stain. It's an ink it's stain. Ink stain. Yeah, so I'm surprised uh, if the mild cleaner would remove it. I'd be surprised. Um, Jimmy's setting up his camera. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. almost look like a blob of ink. It's just been like. But this is this is what I always recommend. Start start with the mild leather cleaner. Um, if this is not strong yeah. enough, then move to the strong leather cleaner. If this is not strong enough, then go to the Damon, Damon remover uh, solvent, you know. So yeah. um, go step by step. Well, Maybe hey. sometimes you are surprised that you can remove something with a mild leather cleaner, like in this case now, you know. Yeah. No, that seems to have done it. Yeah, so it came out. And you don't um, shred the leather too much. It's all gone, Levi. Yeah, uh, it's all gone. It's not in there. We can get in there. Nice. Nate, Jimmy, either one of you. This is where it was right here. 
I do it also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's fine. You can see the difference in the the dirty side and the clean side over here. So. Yeah. I can see some pressure marks there. Was there a, a, a child seat? Yes. In that, in that area? Yeah. So okay. I, I pulled those the seat the, out. Those are the dent marks. Uh, there. There's a child seat in the back here on this side. So I think uh, she may have gotten a hold of a pen because it seemed pretty fresh, but. So we got a hold of a pen yeah, so that's a key that's here. a key point that you've made actually so if it's if it's a fresh ink stain it usually comes off with uh, uh with a mild cleaner or a, or you, you don't really need to use a stronger product if it's fresh yeah but if it's been there for a long time then that's when you're going to need a solid base product even no if the if the if the uh, ink is penetrated in the tear code then of course you have to open the tear code and suck it out or remove it out. Right? So, um, yeah. But um, it makes always tend to, to start with the, with the dental product and um, step by step go higher. No? Don't go the straight higher, away yeah. with the strongest one just because you you expect you, you need it. No? So sometimes you don't need it. Also for for Damien um, marks, beans, dye transfer, you don't need always stronger than you know i yeah. mean mostly yes but not always you know hmm. there has been a, only a few times where i felt like we needed to bump up to the strong rubber cleaner i felt like the mild is something that with multiple applications um and how far the product extends right because yeah. the the strong is, is I'm, I'm assuming a lot more concentrated right it builds up a lather builds up a really big lather and you're able to work it right but i typically like to approach that in smaller sections whereas the mild right i feel like couple squirts onto the brush and start to apply it I have a lather that extends all the way to one section two section and probably even a third section well and, and I think I the foaming applicator the foaming bottle helps too it really does it helps a lot yeah that seems to make a difference yeah it, yeah, it, it helps for um, facing product that you don't need so much product so you, you use less product but um, the, the cleaning result is also with the foam just better. And one thing more is um, you don't you don't use um, uh, so much liquid, so um, water to overly saturate the leather, right? Yeah, so don't, but yeah. you don't use too much water on on the surface on leather because finally leather doesn't like too much water, you know. So um, it's always good when you can clean with less water. All of these three points make sense to, to have a foam spinning bottle. Yeah. I was going to point out something real quick while the guys are working here. It's a little bit separate, but basically I just wanted to tell, because we got about 200 people watching on YouTube right now, uh, wanted to say make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of stuff, we're going to be making a habit of doing this more often. And we've got some really big shows coming up that we're planning to kind of expand on this idea take it a little bit further right here on the channel so if you got a second just go click the subscribe button we promise we don't spam you with anything you don't want it's just going to be all this kind of content so uh hit like hit subscribe and uh let us know how you feel about it in the comments afterwards otherwise drop some questions and comments we got that open to everybody including lars and ram who are here with us right now as uh, we go through the interior with color lock yeah dane and then uh and if you've got uh if anybody is interested in these products We've got them all on the Rag Company website. So yes. go to ragcompany.com. Uh, just go in and type in color lock or leather, and you'll see we've got these amazing kits that uh, are co-branded with color lock and pick them up. And we've got all this stuff. So if you've got, you know, new leather and you just bought a car and you want to care and protect it, like let's say you're a young Dane Hennen. You just Who, picked me? up a new, new Jaguar XKR. Well, no, well. we're going to take Dane's two cars. Let's say he's got that new Tacoma. Brand okay. new Tacoma with the black leather interior. True. Let's say uh, what you want to buy is the uh, new leather kit, uh, the leather care kit, and uh, that way you can use the mild cleaner, get those seats looking uh, nice and clean, get all the factory, you know, dirt and grime off of well, it. Well, and you know, like and dog then, bone stains and stuff, things you got to look out stain, for. Dog bone stains. Get yeah, that we want to get those of off the there seat. too. From yeah. you know, <laughs> giving your dog a big greasy bone. Um, <laughs> And then, then what you want to do is then put the uh, the color lock sealant on it to help protect that leather because it's brand new. Uh, so in case your dog gets on it and 
steps all over your black leather on your new truck, yep. uh, you know, by accident, uh, you know, it's easy Definitely to clean not on up. Purpose. You've, got, you've got some, uh, uh, we've got res a little bit of uh, uh, resistance, right, guys, on the seats. It helps helps prevent, uh, you know, that big greasy dog bone sliding across the seat. And oh, yeah. People Nobody getting wants in and that. out. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then let's say you bought the Jag. You got a 2011 <laughs> Jaguar XKR. You know, it's a little older. A little, uh, little, little older. A little better. Uh, I will say much our, nicer leather, though. Yeah, we've got the leather and vinyl care kit. And uh, that one is great because it does come with the conditioner. So it's a mild cleaner kit plus the conditioner plus a brush plus a little applicator sponge and, uh, and a little towel uh, to clean that... Uh, get that older leather, get all the dirt, the grime out of it, and then condition it so that it stays nice. So got a bunch of stuff uh, on the Rag Company website. You can go check all that stuff out and pick all that stuff up. Oh, so. Absolutely. And uh, while we're in shameless plug mode, let me also point out over <laughs> my shoulder, we have a podcast, folks. We have the Rag Company podcast. It even has its own YouTube channel separate from this one, but it's part of like our family of channels. We've got the Rag Company podcast channel. We've got the Rag Company channel. And we've got the Rag Company FAQ channel. Now, well, for those who are wondering what that, that's about, that answers questions in a short and direct manner. They're short to-the-point videos with Anthony and Levi answering stuff. And who knows, maybe in the future, we'll get Ram or Lars to dip in, and maybe they can offer their input, too. And we can have some FAQ videos with them. I think that'd be well, kind of fun to expand it. Here's the other way. You guys can check out the Color Lock uh, YouTube channel. There's a number of them. Uh, boys, you want to plug them? Yeah. Go for it, guys. Go on. Well, um, we've got the Color Lock UK and North America channel that we run here in UK and North America, and we're just starting to build that channel, do more videos, because we figured we were doing a lot of jobs, um, repairing a lot of seats for customers, so we've just started filming pretty much every every little bit of work that we do now. But Lars, yourself, you've got um, the Centrum's YouTube channel, which has been going on for a lot longer and is almost a, a little... Um, I mean, you've got a lot more content on there, right? A lot more videos. I don't know how many videos exactly totally we have, but, but I know that I launched last year 150 videos. So, um, And we have the channel now for a couple of years, and um, you will find everything. Changing color, um, repair a Nabak sofa, uh, how to clean shoes, how to how to clean mm. leather, how to clean a vintage car leather, how to repair a hole, a cigarette hole, uh, some, and, 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 and. So more or less really, really um, everything. And when you want to go much more deeper in leather and leather knowledge, then we have also the dictionary um, where, where you get um, on top more information. You can read it, but we have also a lot of videos on this uh, website. and. Um, yeah, and you can call Ram. No? That's also always a good. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, yeah, you, you, you. I'm reachable. I'm here. <laughs> Waiting to hear from you guys. So just call me. He's no he's problem. here. Literally, he's here right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the other thing is is uh, one thing that Lars does with uh, our own Patrick Barkle of Rag Company Europe is he's got a they've got a podcast as well where they interview uh, yeah, detailers in, in Europe. Europe. Uh, yeah, and yeah, so it's called detailing, detailing talks, talks and uh, you can check that out as well. And then the leaders in Turin page as well uh, on YouTube has a ton of videos. Oh, um, yeah. And those are great in-depth conversations, too. Yeah. Now, if you're looking to really dig into this stuff, that's a great place to go. Oh, I've also been informed by oh. Grant Hawtrey to point out to Anthony, it's pronounced Jaguar. Not Jaguar. Oh, of course. <laughs> How can I forget? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Yesterday I said presentation instead of presentation, so well, he gave Dane, me like, Dane doesn't for like that. giving presentations. He makes them because they feel like a prison. Well, we don't oh, want that. This is supposed to be a, a fun, free, and fair society here we built in the studio. So now that we're looking at it, what's uh, Anthony doing at the back of the seat? Still using the mild same or the thing. strong just, cleaner? Just, just the same just, thing, different just area. Just scrubbing, just different area. Just detailing, you know. <laughs> it, it looks like you guys are just going full-on attack mode. Like, there's no pause, there's nothing. It's just straight into it. 
Well, well we have to get it clean. Yeah. Well, and there is obviously. on this seat. Oh. There is some old. Con there is some old. Some type of old conditioner, greasy stuff on the back hmm. of this headrest here. Almost like if there was a kid that put their forehead here. You know, when you're a kid and you're oh, like, yeah. you're like, yeah. get me out of this freaking car, and you put your forehead here because <laughs> you're so sick of being in the car. Yeah. And then all that grease gets on there from your forehead. That's what's going on right there. Or here's another possibility: <laughs> the previous owner put something on those seats, and that's a low traffic area, so it stayed on there forever, never actually well, got like moved around or anything. Off. And then next thing you know, it uh, looks like that, feels like that. It could. One, one. Oh, I'm out of here. Oh, oh. Lars oh. disappeared. Image. Ah, oh, here we oh, go. Hey, He's hey, back. Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm back. So one one thing what I want to say is when you when you walk on the backside of the seat is um, that uh, a lot of cars um, as long as I can see this here is on the headrest wheel leather, but I think yeah. on the left and right side is maybe vinyl. Well, Anthony is right now. It's oh, uh, maybe okay. vinyl. Yep. And um, so it's very often a mixture of uh, vinyl and wheel leather and or genius leather. And um, what we did for you guys is for this co-branding thing. Is that we that we optimize the the liquid that you can use it on both um, surfaces. Oh. So um, when you look when you look on colorlock.com, you will find a leather cleaner yeah, and you will cleaner. find a, a, a vinyl, a vinyl cleaner, cleaner, or yeah. artificial leather, uh, artificial leather cleaner. And um, that is not longer necessary. So um, you can use the mild leather cleaner and the strong leather cleaner for vinyl and for uh, genius or real leather. <laughs> I do not know where that camera is going right now, but <laughs> get out of here, you guys. Lars disappeared. I can't. I can't see Lars. Lars is back. Oh, yeah, is back. Some, there's okay. some places that Still camera isn't, aren't, aren't allowed, <laughs> man. But this is the beauty of life, right? I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Even if you try and plan this stuff out, it could still go horribly wrong, and you could just, yeah, you know, wing it. <laughs> back there. Jimmy, while you're back there, you want to clean up that leather? <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, guys, um, if you have a, a, a mixed leather, you have in the front maybe leather, real leather, genius leather, on the back side, vinyl, you can use the same cleaner. You go the same way forward. And um, the only thing is, you don't need um, you don't need conditioner on vinyl. You just need sealant uh, on vinyl. Okay. That is okay. It's good to know. No, it helps clarify it. But I think a lot of people wondered that. Yeah, you don't do any mistakes. So when you apply um, the conditioner on a vinyl, nothing will happen wrong, you know. So yeah, okay. but um, there's no, it's also no benefit. Yeah, <laughs> I got a comment here. Uh, shout out to the color log guy saying uh, from Demo. 1000 saying I recently used Colorlock Mild Cleaner and the Leather Fresh on the side bolster of my 2006 Mazda 3 with great success. Bolster was cracked and worn and it looks incredible now. Great products. That's awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people swear by the the Leather Fresh yeah. product as well, which is which is something that you guys also have, I believe. Yep. Um, yeah, right we, behind we, Anthony we did that there. In the co-branding yeah, we've got that. We've got that for the steering wheel restoration kit as well. Um, so, you know, anyone with a black steering wheel, you know, that needs to be restored. You know, that kit works really, really well. No, the, the results are as good as you're going to get, especially on a, a used car or something like that, where it's, it's a, feeling a little bit worn. I mean, it's going to get it as close to uh, feeling like new as you can get it without doing some kind of full-on corrective surgery kind of thing. That's yeah. pretty, I mean, it's pretty much the, you know, it is a restoration. You know, we yeah. went to the junkyard and grabbed a couple black steering wheels, and I did the restoration kit on it, and they worked really, really well. I grabbed an old BMW steering wheel, old 5 Series uh, steering wheel, and then a, a one from a Cadillac. Mm, uh, that's right, yeah. SRX, and uh, yeah, it, it worked really well. Well, now that you mentioned it, actually, uh, back on our channel, going back quite a few months, actually, there's a, a great video that shows some of the highlights from uh, an event we did with the Color Lock guys here, uh, showing some of the stuff that you can do to leather that basically transforms it. It, it was some really amazing stuff you guys did. 
Yeah. But uh, that's a video yeah, worth checking out BMW after this. Wasn't it that we worked on? Wasn't it that old BMW we worked on? Yeah, uh, there was a, right. the one that we did, the old 90s uh, M3 that we worked on. Yeah. Yeah, there was a video uh, with Morgan where you did the, the interior of the 90s BMW E36 M3 sedan. But then you also had that class where you had a lot of people there and you worked on like stitching together yeah. seats that had huge tears in them, doing kind of patch repair stuff. Like yeah. there was a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, in that there. was the that's the repair class. Yeah, that was uh, earlier this year. Yeah, that was in February this year. <laughs> Time and flies are, this year, man. So yeah, pre-COVID, those those there was four that went around uh, the country, uh, the four classes, and yeah. you could take sign up on Colorlock's website, take a class. And uh, I recommend you guys do it if, uh, you know, once all this gets opened up, but all our friends in Germany and the UK, uh, there are some classes being held uh, with all the effective safety awareness and all that kind of stuff, too. Um, but this way you guys can can learn a little more about leather and dig deep into it. And like I said, as a professional detailer, I've been doing this for 23 years and I learned more about leather in that class than I have ever known. It was like and, learning everything uh, for the was first time. It was so. I, like, I kind of kicked yeah. myself for not doing <laughs> it sooner. Um, you know, so. Nobody knows leather like these guys, so. <laughs> oh, look at that. I got John Hole in the comments here saying, it's all my favorite people in one place. This is awesome. Hey, guys. <laughs> great work going on here. <laughs> Thanks, John. Hey, so, hi to John. John also carries, so if you're in the UK, you can pick up products from John at Clean and Shiny. Yes, Clean and Shiny are one of our main stockists here in the UK, and uh, it's, it's good, to, good to hear John uh, is here as well. And it's, it's funny, we were just speaking today, actually, to this, this afternoon. <laughs> um, we had a funny conversation because I wanted to get in touch with a FedEx account rep, and I just could not. I've been trying to get hold of them for months, and I just could not get hold of them. Uh, and, and John put me in touch, and John, vice versa, wanted to get in touch with someone from UPS, and <laughs> nice. he could not get hold of them. So oh. it was literally just <laughs> a quick exchange of stuff, which is, which is just the way we roll, um, yeah. me and John. <laughs> <laughs> Good awesome. point. Move on. <laughs> Anthony, how's it going over there? I was going to say, he disappeared. Where's he at? So Anthony just got, he was oh, just checking on the off. motor. Just checking on the motor. Uh, I got I got a... <laughs> Oh, I got yeah. a cake bacon in the oven is what I got I got right now. <laughs> you know, cooking some muffins, uh, some would say. Um, no, so if you guys remember, if you've been here since the beginning of the live stream, uh, we applied motor plast to the engine bay. And so after we washed, we rinsed the engine bay. Levi did a quick little power clean spray down. We didn't agitate anything. It was a simple spray on APC, rinse off with a pressure washer, call it good. Um, from there, we applied motor plast, and um, we have just pretty much just closed the hood on a wet engine, right? Pulled it in here and haven't touched it since. And so um, I was just checking on it to see how, how it's looking. Man, this stuff's wild, man. I'm I think you. it's my favorite product in the lineup that we have right now. I don't know. How long, how long, how, how much longer are we running this show for? <laughs> Rest Who knows? I think things are going pretty solid right now, so we can definitely keep it up. I think we okay, worked out the kinks from earlier. How about this? How about I'll show you guys in like 10 more minutes. I'll show you guys. It's looking, <laughs> it's looking, it's, it's basically done, right? I'm just waiting for those, uh, that, 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 that golden uh, crisp to be added around the corners. Well, like oh, I gold. see, yeah. Oh. So if this is a marshmallow yeah. analogy, he's waiting until he has a nice golden marshmallow. He doesn't want to set it on fire. Cr Dane, <laughs> you can't say that on here. <laughs> demonetize no um <laughs> so yeah no i it's 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 literally it's 95 percent there um it's it looks awesome i'm just gonna give it just a little bit longer um basically the longer it sits the better it looks um but keep in mind guys we, pre we sprayed motor plast on uh, essentially a dirty engine bay didn't agitate it sprayed on some power clean rinsed it off and just said uh okay and, and this thing was filthy. this thing was filthy yeah. if you guys go back through the feed you'll see how dirty this was this thing was pretty bad um, so I'm really excited to show you guys what this looks like um, here in a few minutes. So stick around. Back to you, Levi. Oh, thanks, Anthony. Oh, well, geez. I think I think I got my seat clean. I Driver's got mine. Seat's I'm clean. I'm, I'm conditioned. Well, both front I'm and back. still touching up spots that you didn't. That's scrub. not true. That's not true. <laughs> so, <laughs> everything has been scrubbed <laughs> perfectly. You know, when I had my shop and I'd split guys on a car. Yeah. It was up to the other guy's job to double check the other person's work, just to make sure that what we were sending out was that's, quality. That's what you're for. 
Well, no, that's what you're <laughs> supposed to do for me. Oh, like, I can't sorry. Just, oh. I thought I was running this show here. <laughs> sorry, guys. It's, it's fine. No, that's cool. I get it. Um, yeah, well, anyway, so one thing I've noticed is that uh, I think Nick needs to get himself uh, some, some uh, weather tech, some, some rubber oh, yeah. You know, as we were right. talking yesterday, uh, it's nothing like a... Oh, he oh. says he just, oh, just arrived. arrived. Excellent. <laughs> He's yeah. ready for him. There is there is a certain kind of person that runs uh, a, a cloth mat and is happy with that, and that person is Dane, and it doesn't make any sense. See, that's that's, that's only like, true in a very very specific instance. <laughs> well, it's the only. It's instance in the Jag, at the moment, Dane, and their factory, and that's fine. But every other vehicle I've ever had, first thing I did, get nice all weather floor mat. What about you guys, Lars Ram? What do you guys do? Yeah. Uh, I think you guys would be embarrassed, but I, I, I'm just, I'm just happy with the fabric flow mats. Oh um, no, yeah, Ram! I just, I just take my boy that, Ram here. Well, at least he has a floor mat. I can like atmosphere now, telling you guys that you know, that's what can I you do. Can you guys believe that there's people out there that literally don't have floor mats and just put their feet on the carpet? Yeah. No, that's village. That's <laughs> they're that's they are in stuff. prison, as Nate no, said. Come on. <laughs> Yikes. Lars, how about you? I just drive my car. <laughs> <laughs> he just drives it. He doesn't think about it. <laughs> he just puts his feet in anywhere, wherever they go. You know why? Because he knows if anything happens, he can fix it. That's true. That's true. You guys are selling interior products. So makes it easy. So I just got me some new uh, Brooks Ghost 12s here. Nate's going to get a shot of these bad boys. Oh, before I get a cramp. <laughs> uh, but I just uh, I cracked them open out of the box and then uh, oh, my legs cramping up. Sorry, um, got them out of the box and the first thing I did grab some of the uh, Colorlock waterproofing spray. Did two coats on these bad boys. Nice. So very nice. nice. Not too shabby. Yeah. No, I'm, don't put I'm, rubber I've got a project. Yeah, I've got a project for the next couple of weeks. My wife's just gone out and bought these Nike Air Force ones, the white ones, Ooh. and she wants me to she wants me to paint the the actual Nike logo in like a rose gold color. Oh, so, uh, okay. Well, so custom action. It either look very good or I would have ruined them. <laughs> those are the, yeah, those are the you got a you got a fifty fifty <laughs> shot there. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'll oh, be so. rad. I got a couple of comments here coming in. Uh, Humberto says Anthony's en energy is coming down. We need to get him some cookies, stat. We need a bang. <laughs> he needs a bang. Uh, and then we've also got Prestige Detailing Studio I'm saying. One step ahead of Humberto <laughs> over here, man. Oh, he did. It. So, as you can see, I went and grabbed some crackers because. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't stop eating ever. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I get hungry, and you guys know me so well. That you'll be like, oh, Anthony's he's, he's coming down just a little bit. He yep. needs some food. Here you go, Jimmy. Here's some crap. That's the stuff you, you only catch in a live. You don't catch that in an edited video because, you know, we keep all, all the low-energy Anthony moments out of there for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you guys how much I eat during a day. It is, like, it is alarming. It is, it is haunting. And I don't know how I am not a... <laughs> it haunts him all day. <laughs> it's spooky season. What do you expect? Speaking of haunting, right? <laughs> could I, could, with with your permission, Dane, and Nate's yeah. permission, could I tease something that would be coming here within the next week and a half? A, a visual, a picture, something hmm. cool that Nate created himself. I'm uh, a, super curious now. It's, it's 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 small. It's a sticker. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tease yeah. a sticker. Bring Hold it on. on. What you got? They're watching the stream. They're they're gonna get special <laughs> treatment. That's right. And that's so, how you get special treatment. You watch. Yeah. So Ram. So you. Uh, so your wife got you those. Got those Air Force Ones. Are they for her, or for you? Yeah, they're for her. Yeah. I, oh, nice. I'm not a fan of rose gold. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Rose. <laughs> rose gold. All right. I don't know. You might be. Yeah. Who, who? Who's to say? Yeah. Other right, Jimmy, watch out. Yeah, but this this kind of shoes, the Air Force One, they need leather shield. All right. Who's yeah. running mm. the camera? Good point. Mm. Your shoes um, from 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 Levi. With mesh on it, they need waterproofing spray, man. Right? So yep, yeah, to protect, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, so you oh, can use that. Oh, there the... we go. Oh Ooh. yeah, Ooh, Halloween. <laughs> Check that out, right? Ah. So uh, Nate behind the camera here is actually who made this, and this is probably one of our favorite stickers 
favorite designs that we've had yet. This is pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. I know. That's pretty rad. going to die. Dude, I am. <laughs> He's going to put that all over himself nice. and his room. Well, I hope we got extras because these are literally, these are so cool that I want like several for myself. Like imagine oh. that on, a, on an orange bead maker bottle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, orange people IK, are going to go nuts for those. Trigger sprayer. <laughs> it's going to look awesome. Anyway. I mean, I mean, I like I like this combination between uh, dark gray and uh, orange. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it came out good, huh? So, yes. so one of the fun things we've we've noticed that we like doing. Uh, Nate has a lot of fun designing them, but um, is creating these uh, unique stickers for certain sales. Um, they're pretty inexpensive for us to make, and they're extremely high quality. So unlike yeah. other stickers, these these actually, they last. you know, they're waterproof. They, Fantastic. They've got UV protection on them. So they, you can put them on the back of your car and you can take them off a couple years later and they still look brand new. Um, Cause they're, they're really nice, high quality stickers. So there, it looks like there's some grease on the back of this seat. So, hmm. and I might have trying with the mild, to see if I can get it. Does that Sequoia have third row seats? It's like they put something okay. heavy or you know, lawnmower or dog well, that's bone. What I'm dog wondering. Bone back here. If you got third row but seats, if somebody sat the in the back and didn't clean it off in time, munched on something. Um, Dane, did you get that? <laughs> did you get your seats all cleaned after taking Cali to the vet or to the? No, I still need to do that. I hope that makes you cringe. <laughs> you you have it? I didn't hear that. Sorry, my earpiece popped out. Oops. No, I have not. I hope it makes you cringe. That's what I said. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dane, those are those are those are bodily fluids that are all over those seats now from a cow. That makes it sound horrible. That's that's well, a foily cow. Bone. You gave her an actual cow's femur. <laughs> that's a femur from a Holstein. Um <laughs> That uh, you gave to that that dog of yours to eat on the back of your in the back seat of your truck. <laughs> um, so I'm just I'm just saying that's that's. Uh, that's it was it was mostly fluids. a prop. It mostly just sat there. And then when I got home, then she mowed down on it. But yeah, but it's yeah. still smeared all over the seats, and you didn't didn't wipe it off. In man. in the one place it was, I wiped up off afterwards with a Eagle 350 that Did I had. You drive in the, car. the truck today, so I can go out there and clean it off for you because it is kind of no. Bothering me. I oh, drove the Jag today. Sorry. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Dane's only put like 30 miles on that truck since he's owned That's it. true. That truck has like no miles on it because I barely drive it. <laughs> How many miles have you put on the Jag since you've, since you've owned it? Mm. What's it been? A year now? When Just I, over a yeah. Year? Yeah, it's been over a year. Uh, when I bought it, it had less than 79, 78,000 miles on it. And now I'm looking at 88-ish. Okay. Ram, yeah. question yeah, for you. But there out was a period where I had the... five cars, so it was like a whole thing. <laughs> Got a question for Ram, Dave. Oh, okay. Ram, out of all of the Rag yeah. Company cars, all of the cars that we have here that we that we that we feature on the channel, you've seen most of them. What is your favorite car? Hmm. Uh, it has to be. It has to be Danes. There's no question about that. Aww. What the hell, Ram? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I literally drive a Dodge Ram. He's and you're really proud of me that Ram. That you're picking and your name the, is the Ram. Jag? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I thought that was a piss take. I thought that was you just. <laughs> <laughs> it was. You, you were about having, you know, putting hey, that, that. they don't make you trucks know? like that they anymore, man. That's a 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. They literally do. They're they called know, Rams. I know, I'm, <laughs> no, I really miss a Not even. Okay, what about Lars? Right, I know that Lars liked Morgan's um, uh, 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 E46 M3. Mm -hmm. What What do you like now, Lars? What's your favorite car? No, I miss a Volvo. No, that is a really Dane's old Volvo is a nice Ooh, car. Ooh, Dane's old. Yeah, that is. Thanks, true. man. I love that car. That was a great car. Dane had a really cool red Volvo, yeah. and then he—I uh, don't yeah. know whatever happened to it. I, I think. It's well, a, it's I sold it because I had to make room for the Jack. <laughs> finally, finally, guys, when I'm when I'm in the U.S., I really I really like your your big car. So. <laughs> Bram, you can you can say which kind of cars I always rent when we go to SEMA or yeah. something. Yeah. Always, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, we go for the biggest you know, car possible. Like, <laughs> well, it's like, it's like a, a like when in Rome type thing. Give me the biggest if he's car. there, he wants yeah. to have the big vehicle because he's in America. He wants, you know, well, you yeah. can't get back a home. Yeah. You got to have here. Yeah. 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 No, and I, I think, think I, I remember the story about the Ford Explorer, Lars. I don't know if you remember, but the last time I went to the Idaho, because Lars has been wanting this Ford Explorer for such a long time. We, we got up there at the rental car center at the, at the counter, and the lady offered 
we've got a Ford Explorer and yeah, a Chevy something there, else. Yeah. Uh, which one do you want? I think it was so okay, obvious row, no. that Lars wanted the Ford Explorer. I was like, <laughs> you don't even need to ask him. Just give him, he, what's the Ford? Just give it to him. <laughs> what's hilarious is that's just oh, like I a know. midsize here. That's not even a big SUV. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, that's a huge car. It's not a big one, but I, but you know, so, I ordered one, and this is now also available in Germany, um, an Explorer. Mm -hmm. but with, a, with a different engine or something like this so i right. ordered this car but i never i never drive it so the the last True. five six times i ordered i ordered by the rental car company and ford explorer i never get it you know so yeah. they, i always ask oh, i i ordered a ford explorer and they say oh sorry you don't have but you can have a bigger one i say okay that's fine but i want a ford explorer yeah but we don't have <laughs> you can get a bigger one and then we was in idaho or i don't know remember where we were so well, I give we you like in Idaho, a... you guys got the Explorer. It was Boise. It was <laughs> yeah, Boise. it was yeah. Boise. And then we get, Boise, and then, we get and then I get the Explorer, and it was a bit funny because the lady on the counter she starts advertising a little bit the Explorer. She wants it, I take it, but she don't know that I want one. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> that's smiling, <laughs> and then she said, "You can start." I was sat there advertising. in the back, thinking, "Like you don't have to sell the car to this guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants the car." <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's take a look at this third row seat. Okay. now we got this third row seat working here right. and so um i think that these these whole things can come out right if we wanted to take out the whole thing are you wanting yes. to work on how you want to work on these from the back here from the front how do you typically like to approach things uh well side these seats aren't super i mean they're easy to take out but they're not anything that you know i do i'm just seeing a lot up around here right and so so i'm saying we just scrub them where we're at and then maybe one of us on one side one on the other Get this, you get this backside done. I'll get oh. the inside, get that knocked out. Or you're wanting to come from the front and I'll come from the back. Yes. Okay. And then uh, and then we can just flip them out of the way and not have to worry. And Anthony, I just refilled the strong cleaner. Whoa. No way. Right here. So, so you can with the refill. Wow. So you can I was like, wait, because it dumped out entirely on the interior when it fell no, off the Dane, center no, console? Dane, <laughs> Dane, no. This is Nick, we're sorry about this. This is a very sequoia. nice bottle of strong ah. cleaner, also available at the rag company. And uh, you can use it just to top up your bottles. Uh, I may have put too much in this one. Yes, well, I did. That's a good idea. I put too much in. But we'll get, the, get it on the towel here. It's like Dane. Oh, it's it's cleaning the bottle. So, I mean... You're all set to go. Yeah. I can't wait until Lars gets to experience my Dodge Ram and know what the vehicle feels like. <laughs> well, you did put a lift kit on it. It's a big truck, Lars. I think that up. you will be impressed. I think you'll see that. And I'm going to get you a cowboy hat when you ride with me. It's going to oh, be yeah. awesome, man. It's going to oh, be a boy. good time. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I hope everybody knows, man, that that Dodge Ram is one of the biggest jokes that I have in my life, and I do it for fun. It's, I think it's a funny thing. I'm not serious. I'm very sarcastic. Well, he kind of is. I'm kind of serious. <laughs> You're kind of serious. Your mom was here yesterday, and she was telling us she didn't know what happened to you because now she's you're a big been, Dodge Ram fan. She's just been changing me, and she's yeah. worried about me. <laughs> yeah. She's very concerned about you. Worried about know. her boy. I know. <laughs> Uh, I got a comment here from uh, Josh Davies saying, Lars goes to America, ends up buying a Humvee. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great deal, guys. I got it. I don't know what to tell you. It was the best one they had. <laughs> Lars, this is a military edition Humvee. This is like the real thing. <laughs> this, this looks stolen. <laughs> They did decommission the military Humvees, so you now can buy them. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. So for a while, there was a moratorium on them. You couldn't pick them up, but now you can. So you can pick yourself up an AM General Humvee now. That's Nate's right. looking Instead to get the, one. That's, uh, the GMH that's on ones. his, uh, that's on his uh, short list for another vehicle. Well, it's the next preferred <laughs> overlander vehicle yep. that it is. Those things can go up anything. Oh, man. Well, some of the old yeah. H1s are still going for a hundred grand. Oh uh, yeah, and so to get one of the military decommissioned ones, you're still ten to twenty thousand. Well, and like the H1s that everybody wants are like the really the really late model ones that had that switch well, in no, the power the plant. They're the same. They're the with same. With the really ones good turbo diesel. The military ones. Well, the early ones were. Yeah. 
No, they're all H1s have never changed the design. No, they did the H1 Alpha that actually had the much higher horsepower Duramax diesel right, Dane, and all that stuff right. in it. But what I'm saying is that the design is the same. Oh, the design so, is the same. I was talking more. about the, yeah, the yes. engine. But you guys. yeah, okay. all right. <laughs> this is gonna be pretty is it, cool. Is it so I think that this is gonna give us a pretty good 50-50. Where should I cut it? Right the, here. I'm thinking I'm gonna H1 cut it right there. In the, in the luxury version. Yes. Is it true? Yeah, they they the Alpha was probably the best of the luxury version. Yeah, but the military Those go for a ones premium. just have vinyl seats and metal floors, and uh, mm. they're yeah, very the utilitarian. Version, yeah, they have a lot less like interior a... space than people expect them to. If you've never sat in one, it's a uh, it's an interesting experience because there's just a giant hump next to your uh, right arm if you're sitting on the left side, and it takes up most of the space in the middle of the vehicle. Because the whole drive line is just raised up into the truck. <laughs> just out of curiosity, how much product do you think you guys have used? So uh, probably way more than they're supposed to. <laughs> so no. I've gone through probably one full bottle of of, uh, of mild cleaner, maybe three quarters so of a bottle, bottle right no. now. Three quarters the, of a the bottle. The bottle, you mean? No, of the mild. So I had about a half a right. bottle. And I've used almost all yeah. of it. And I just well, talk about what you started with. You didn't start with no, a full I, bottle. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I've used half a bottle, and then I've filled it back up. So I'm saying throughout this whole thing, I'll probably use three quarters of a bottle on this vehicle. Right. Okay. Uh, and then the strong, okay. we've only probably used about half a bottle of strong cleaner. Okay. So Sequoia, I mean, that's a big car. It's a big vehicle, yeah. and there's uh, a lot of leather in here. So we have... But normally I find myself, because this is what I use at home when I'm working, um, I usually, I can get about four cars out of a bottle. Four normal cars. Nice. I don't do a lot of big SUVs. I don't do a lot of third rows. Um, you know, so. Yeah, cool. And I am being a little heavier with the product. So mm. I am using a little more just because these seats are pretty dirty. Um, well. And to remind people who are just now joining us, what products we're using here on the seats? I'm using Mild Cleaner. Anthony's using Strong. From Colorlock, which... Uh, Colorlock, company product, huh? Yeah, which is where Ram and Lars here are from. That's definitely looking yeah, better. What cheap tape is this? The adhesive's coming yeah, right off. From Dane's house. <laughs> oh my gosh, look, at it's just sticking onto itself. Get that out of here. <laughs> Who's running this tape show? Who's ordering our tape? You are. We need to get some Matt Mormon tape, the nice green, well, whatever the heck he's using. <laughs> the 3M they, they, tape. I saw, I saw one comment who uh, people ask, is the product safe and you don't need cloth for your for your hands? Yes. It's mm. um, one comment what I saw. Um, I will on answer on this because um, so the, the mild and the strong laser cleaner are both water-based products. They, they are completely solvent-free. And um, the mild laser cleaner is not a, a thinner, a diluted version of the strong laser cleaner. Um, so it, both are completely different um, recipes. But both are tested here in Germany and in, 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 in skincare labs. Um, how that they are um, also safe for leather, but also safe for your hands. So we, we test everything. There is um, really no problem. And um, I use the strong leather cleaner for the last 15 years to clean my hands after after a paint job because it, it removes color paint from your hands very, very well. Yep. And my hands look still normal. Um, <laughs> as this is one thing, but we also fingers. care for this and we look in the recipe which kind of chemicals we use, which kind of this, and is it, yeah, is it right fine for right hands. So you really don't need any... any um, a gloss or something um, to protect yeah. your hands with it. Well, Completely that's what, that's what, necessary. Uh, and uh, Lars, that's what I was saying is I, my hands actually, I feel, feel better when I use the mild cleaners and stuff than if I use something else. Like my skin just feels softer. My hands, they're not dried out. They're not, you know, like most cleaners you would use. Um, in which case those I recommend people wear gloves, but this stuff you don't have to. 
So. Well, and that kind of ties back to the color lock philosophy, where you always do want to take the less aggressive method first if you can help it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I got Yoshi That's here asking what towels are being used to wipe everything off. Just Drago's, and uh, I got a blue 365. I was going to say, he probably knew about the Drago's, but the 365s he may not have uh, caught on until he said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's a huge difference in the feel. How's yeah, that, look that on shows up on camera. You can see that. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Most of the times you'll also notice that you know the area once cleaned, it becomes less shiny, <laughs> so it doesn't shine mm -hmm. as much. It's got that nice matte look to it as well. Yep. That's what I really like. And the shiny is uh, no is not a good thing. People seem to think they need to keep their leather shiny. <laughs> That's why there's a lot of different mm. dressings and stuff, but a lot of that is just like the is the skin and the oils and salts Blech. and all that stuff from it's the body. Accumulation of dirt, yeah, yeah, and that's not good. So yeah. it's actually harmful. It's kind of gross. Yeah, at least on the back side of those seats there, you could really see the difference that uh, Anthony was getting yeah. out of it there. Yeah. yeah. I was Thank surprised you. those ink stains came out so easily as well with the mild cleaner, uh, Levi. Uh, I know. It must have I been fairly it fresh. Amazing. Yeah, I think. <laughs> cool. <laughs> What's what did you do? What well, I went to go grab the towel and the tape was stuck to it. I'm like, well, this looks looks, looks awkward. It looks kind of weird. We are consummate professionals here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. There's also no problem when, when you paint with a, with, a, with a strong all my leather cleaner on the carpet. So the carpet doesn't um, get any any negative effects from this it, it will come clean but nothing more so it's um, also pocket in here um, really no problem yeah it's like some sort of a baggie down there. find a few more pennies Anthony oh. I'm afraid of what he might find down there <laughs> I think that's a seatbelt yeah. <laughs> okay. all right it yeah, might just be a child a anchor yeah I'm happy with that Nick, I advise you to start putting your child in this third row. Uh, that way, um, one, it's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about her so much. Uh, you know, it makes it a little more inaccessible if there's any issues, just if you're listening. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. You want her up front so you guys can get a hold of her and all that. All I know is in the Suburban, my kids all fight for the third row, so I took it out. <laughs> really? <laughs> Solved that problem right yeah. quick. That's right. Nobody's fighting over who's sitting in the back when both of them can sit in the back. For some reason, they still fight. So. <laughs> They're captain's chairs, too. They're, like, totally separated and everything. Well, that's the problem is the captain's chairs allows for easy access into the back row. Hmm. Mm. Wow. This looks awesome. I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah. Yeah, that cleaned up all right. This bad boy's off. I think I'm just... I'll just be honest, guys. Tan interiors, not my thing. It's not, <laughs> and they're not as fun. They're uh, not as fun. Like they, they are very satisfying to clean, but I just feel like, you know, all it takes is one bad off-roading adventure with a tan interior, and it will never quite be the same again. Yeah. Especially the carpets. It's, it's always the carpeted stuff. So like when, when I saw Dane's for the first time, I was like, <laughs> oh no, Dane. I'm like, you can't eat in here. You can't be eating right? ketchup yeah. and, and barbecue sauce in this thing. Which is one of and Dane's favorite things. I'll remember that the next time I take the Jag off-roading. <laughs> <laughs> Dane's, so. all about a, Dane's all about a greasy hamburger and some off-roading. And yeah, you buddy. can't do all those things in the Jag because of the tan interior. Well, <laughs> is that a challenge? It might be a challenge. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. But yeah. I think just generally tan interiors. I, I also think that, especially with leather, leather tan, tan leather, because of the gonna cracks, swap. Nate's gonna swap. Because of cracks and things like that, you kind of see everything a little bit more. It, it, yeah. it makes it look a little bit more aged, right? Yeah. In, in, in in comparison right. to black leather, in, in just my opinion. And um, I know that Levi is probably doing the same thing with the suburban, um, but that's why 
I'm a proud owner of a of a gray vinyl Dodge Ram interior. <laughs> it's about rough, the most utilitarian yeah, possible <laughs> arrangement. So as you guys can see, this is one of the applicator sponges that comes in the kit. Yeah. And I just put a little conditioner on there. And I'm going to use this as my applicator to put it all over the seats. So. Oh, look at that. That goes a long way. No, that's so fast way. And this is a nice soft uh, sponge, right, Lars? Yeah. yeah, it's not a magic sponge. Don't worry not about it. Not a that. magic sponge. No, yeah. no, right. No, so, no, can, no. can you explain? Hold on, what, what is this thing made of? <laughs> well, what I want you to do is actually on the su subject of that, explain what a magic eraser does to leather. Because I've seen a ton of people say, oh, just use a magic eraser. Oh, it'll erase ink, yeah. it'll erase crowns, all that. What will that do to leather? Well, the magic eraser is, uh, is an abrasive product. Uh, when you touch it, it you, you can't really tell. It doesn't feel like it's an abrasive thing, but it actually, uh, um, the way it works is it actually sands or it, it removes a surface. It removes a layer off the surface, and that's why it's very good at removing staining that's on the surface. Uh, yeah, just of course, try it on your paint. It's pretty cool. Using no, that. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially when it's wet, I think. And you get a, you get a, you get a rough. Uh, you get a rough area uh, the, or the surface will come uh, rougher than before it is but it is so on a, a nano particle so very small that you can't feel it it doesn't feel more but when you look under under um, or when you come closer two t 200 times or uh, 300 times closer on a on a special lens then you can see um, how rough the surface is after using um, a magic sponge. The magic sponge. And, yeah. Um, so it'll attract dirt a lot quicker as well. Yeah, and then it will come uh, a quick, quick dirter. Yeah. But if you if you if you um, use water or a cleaner and you you make it wet, the abrasive will go down. So when you use it dry, it's even harder than when you use it wet. Oh, so, okay. Um, so when you use um, my laser cleaner with a sponge, it is less aggressive, but it is still nothing what we recommend just for a special um, um, stains when, when you when you try a lot of things. And this is maybe the final or solution type of leather fine because then, but then you have to protect after this so you need the sealant or you need a top coat yeah or you have to paint anyhow you know so um it's always independent with what you want to do so but i mean this car here you want to clean and protect it so um mild laser cleaner and conditioner and use um the gentle sponge for for applicate um, the conditioner and use a brush maximum to to clean it because you don't want to do a paint job or you don't want to spray a, a, a new clear coat on it eh? yeah so there's the back cool. <laughs> not too bad all right yeah, yeah. that didn't take that long but well, uh got through it made quick work yeah oh, well, uh, by the way guys i've got a quick comment here uh probably a good one for lars to answer from Mike Filler here saying, can I use Strong Cleaner on the interior that has paint overspray and dust on it? Because I have a customer that just got their truck painted and it got inside the truck. Car paint? Uh, independent kind of paint, no? Yeah, I'm assuming car it, paint. Out from Sorry. outside? Uh, yeah, they uh, said somehow the exterior car paint got inside the truck. Like okay. over, paint overspray. Oh. I mean, I'd you say can start try it, but strong I'm not 100 sure if it works. I mean, when you do it straight away, so very time is one one thing what makes it make a difference. So when you wait one week, the, the paint will dry very completely, and then you can't remove it. I think so with strong okay. cleaner. And, um, so it's a I it's a timeliness thing. Yes, I guess he needs also um, GLD. So Damon. How we call it in the in the U.S. Ram is it Damon? Uh, oh, denim, denim stain denim, remover. The, the denim stain remover. Yeah, the Damon stain remover. Yeah. So in German we have a different name. So sorry guys. So the Damon stain remover um, will help you to 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 remove it and um, take your time. So do it slowly. Um, put some liquid on a on a cloth. Wipe it. 
and then go on the wet surface with a strong laser cleaner and the brush over it um, wipe it again check how it looks like and do it maybe again don't rub it too much so do it slowly step by step that you can remove step by step everything and then you have uh, the option that you don't remove or you don't damage the leather on the surface but always when you use Damon stain remover um, applicate after this when it's dry uh, a sealant or our the the, the color log rack company co-branding sealant okay yeah. No, good, good point. Idea. Ah, we got Anthony here ready to show us what's under the hood. If well, only I could hear him. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me see if I can get back here. Oh, no, I'm you're back. all good I'm now. back. I'm back. I'm ready to go. So, um, yes, so now it's time to show you guys the motor plast. So, uh, again, just to kind of bring people up to speed that are new, that are now just watching. Um, so when we were outside here, not even, what, an hour ago, um, we did a basically a complete wash on the exterior of here using GSF by Coach Kemi. And then from there, popped open the hood. Um, sprayed everything down with uh, APC, just a power clean, uh, 10 to 1, and then rinsed everything off with a pressure washer. We didn't agitate anything with brushes. We didn't scrub anything. We didn't do anything like that, right? We rinsed everything off, sprayed it down with Coach Kimmy Motor Plast, um, and let it sit, right? And it's been baking, right? Well, baking, right? Like a cake. And so um, the motor was warm. It wasn't overly hot. Um, typically, we find that um, you want to let the we want to let this settle for as long as possible on a warm engine to a cool engine, and it kind of does the work for you. And so, basically, how this works: it's water-based dressing, um, but it is a hydrophilic dressing uh, that basically creates an elastic coating, very similar to a traditional coating. What this does is, I mean, it, it basically coats all of the uh, engine bay bits, everything from the plastics to the rubbers uh, to the hoses uh, to even the electrical components, basically keeping the water away from the important stuff. And um, it's pretty cool, man. It's, it's a pretty cool product. So I'm gonna show you guys the after shot of this. Um, keep in mind that this was filthy, right? Not even an hour ago, this was a pretty filthy engine bay. Um, and we didn't do any agitation. We just sprayed it on, let it sit, and let's check it out. Oh man, we gotta get a light on that thing. Let me see if I can go get, let me see if I can go get one. I think I can wheel one of these wow, things over here. Wow, I can see here. the shine, though, that's for sure. Let's see if I can wheel one of these lights. Yeah, so Holy back cow. in the old days when I would detail a car, I would actually clean the engine, degrease it, scrub it, do all that stuff, and then we would do what Anthony's talking about. We would apply a water-based dressing to the engine bay, and then we would turn the car on for a little while and bake it. So we would heat up the engine, causing the water-based dressing to dry on the surface giving it a nice finished look. However, the thing that's most different about this product is it creates an elast, it's got a chemical in it that creates an elastomer bond, uh, or elastomeric uh, bond, so it's very flexible. So uh, it'll protect all your electrical components, all your uh, um, hoses, all your connections. Everything is very well protected and sealed against moisture, which is, Kind of wild to think about that it's uh you got to get it wet to make it work but once it uh finishes its chemical reaction you now have a water resistant engine bay uh that helps protect you know all those components so which is pretty rad well i think that's the most impressive part about it is just how minimal the level of effort has to be to make it look this good because you really didn't do a whole lot to it you didn't go in there and scrub everything with a you know, fine Q-tip no. or anything like that. You literally just hosed it down, put, you know, some product on there, clean it off uh, with a wash over, and then threw this on, and that was it. Yeah, and I think that, that yeah. for yeah. anybody that's, yeah. I mean, for, for a quick engine bay dressing, right, or something that you're even just, you can do, I mean, you can do it up and basically do all the prep work and everything beforehand and make this be a really pro-level application, um, or you can do something simple like this. I'm talking spray it down, spray it on, let it sit and go. And I think that 90% of the customers are going to be absolutely happy with the way this looks. I mean, there's no yeah. reason. I mean, it looks great to me. I mean, basically, all of the hoses, everything else looks really good and protected. Um, this area right here where it's kind of still shiny, I would say that this area it would still be semi-curing, right? Because it's going to get a little bit flatter. But even touching that, it's not sticky. There's no extra residue on there. Um, I think it just added some sheen to that metal piece right here and then this plastic, but um, I'm super happy with how that turned out. And so, and this will last upwards of a year 
um, due to the high temperature rating of that or coating, and um, it basically creates protectant. Yeah, it, it basically creates a like like Levi said, like, like a coating. It's all hydrophilic, yeah. and so if I were to take water and pour this over that, um, it would just slide right off. It's pretty cool. So, anyways, yeah, that's Motorplast, man. So check it out. So. That's, yeah, that's really cool. Um, Levi, do you want to see it? You haven't even seen I it. I haven't even looked at it yet. Hold on a second. I'm just cleaning out this little sponge <laughs> here, but I'm going to put sealant on me? this driver's seat and the steering wheel, and then uh, I think we're done. All right. Um, holy cow. Yeah, this looks great. I mean, the engine's still kind of dirty, and I mean, you can see under the hood, it's still dirty, but yeah. everything looks pretty good, and... You know, we could scrub this and really actually do oh, the proper job. Sure. But, but for what it was, for what right? it was, it looks pretty good. You know, I probably wouldn't let it out of my shop like that. But <laughs> <laughs> so considering the absolute minimal effort involved, you got like yeah. 75 percent better, which is. Yeah. And if you were to actually clean and put that on there, boy, you'd be sitting pretty. I mean, that that stuff really looks good if you actually yeah. go in and clean up the obvious spots. Yeah, so uh, so I'm putting the sealant on the steering, on steering wheel, wheel. Yeah, and this correct. driver's seat. Using the sponge. And this stuff, we're just going to let it uh, really dry, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, just let it dry naturally, and that's it. Yeah. And this is, uh, tell us about the product and what it actually kind of is. It's like a kind of like a paint sealant almost, like you would put on the outside of the vehicle. Um, but this is designed for the uh, clear coat that's on the leather, right? And the leather itself. Yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a breathable, uh, breathable sealant that um, allows the material underneath to still breathe, but offers, you know, protection against um, two main things. One is obviously um, um, abrasion and friction. So getting in and out of the car, that's going to scuff it. So it, it, it prevents against that. And it also prevents against dye transfer. So on, on something like a tan seat here, you know, yeah. um, denim stains and stuff like that, you know, they can, they can catch on very easily onto the onto the leather. And this product prevents that, stops that from happening. Even if you apply it and even if you were to get some on it, it makes it super easy to clean it. So you could just, you know, if you were to get some on it, grab some mild cleaner on a cloth and just literally wipe it off. That's how easy it is to take it off. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't really change the the gloss. So if you have a, a a matte a matte leather, you you still have a matte leather after you apply this product. And if you have a semi gloss, yeah. for example, then you still have a semi gloss. Um, um, so you don't have to have to think about this. And um, and you can spray it on as well. So if you if you have an airbrush and you want to spray it on. You know, you can spray that on as well and dry it with a heat oh, yeah, gun. Nice. You know, that also gives a very, very good result. You know, yep. um, and obviously on the steering wheel as well, it's a, it's a very useful product. Yeah. The only trick is when you have a very matte black leather, um, then sometimes you can get some stripes on it. So you have to polish out this. So this is um, something just use. Just use again some products and polish it with a, with a sponge or go over with a, with a gentle microfiber. And, and and polish it so yeah i mean on this kind of colors on this tan or this beige what the what the seat is is no problem but if you have a for example the audi um audi soul what is a very so, mad audi soul black, black yeah 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 for example i don't i don't know really a american car who has a so mad black i don't know so yeah that's all right, though. This but is, Audi, this is... I know also Audi has a very matte black or also the new G-Class um, interior is very, very matte. And um, then sometimes you you, will, um, you can get it matte as it is, like it was, but um, you have to polish it. That is the only trick. So if you have a black one, polish. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right. That's no, good. Color, no problem. So I was going to point out real quick, guys, before you get into that, just a second. I want to make sure and give people a chance to ask more questions. Uh, I want to make sure we get a chance to answer any questions that come through here before we wrap things up. I know there's a few things left to do, but bring them on. Bring in your questions, and we'll take care of them here in this last, like, 10-minute period. Yeah. So one thing what you can do also with leather shield is when you have this um, from, from your shoes when you come out and in, um, down on the plastic part of the door panels, you know, this stripe yeah. that you have. 
Yeah. So you can you can clean this part with mild or strong laser cleaner. Then you can um, you can polish it a little bit with a with a um, four thousand er polish pad. Um, and then you can go with laser shield over this plastic hard plastic parts also to protect it. And then you you don't get so quickly again this kind of stripes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, no? Yeah. Yeah. And that way you so can it, that kick panel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and also well, you can use it as for tires. So outside, when you when you don't want it too glossy, maybe you can check this once once a day. <laughs> um, when you when you when you don't want to have it too glossy, your tires, you can apply also laser shield outside on your tires on the on the rubber. Um, that is also a, a, a nice looking sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I didn't know you could use it on tires. That's rad. That's sweet. That's sweet. Okay. Okay, well, well let's there do you a go, wrap guys. up here. Let's talk about kind of everything that we use today. Um, from start to finish, we were outside with the Sequoia. We used GSF by Coach Kemi. Um, used some mitts, basically did a full foam wash, got everything washed and cleaned up. Yeah. Um, cleaned up the wheels with a little power clean in the IK Foam Pro 12. Brought it inside, dried it off, and we foamed a little bit of bead maker. Right, you can go Just back a little and bit. check that yeah. out. Yeah, check it out. Um, <laughs> and then we sprayed bead maker on the rest of the car and did a full application. Uh, and then for the interior, what did we do? Got the boys in here, and uh, we were able to do mild, strong. We used some conditioner. We used some sealant, all from yeah. Color Lock, along with Color Lock brush, some Dragos, and some 365s, and yeah. just cleaned the leather. That's all we did. We didn't clean the carpets. We didn't clean no. the door panels, you know, but we did tackle all the seats and the leather. So at least, yeah. you know, made the job a little easier for Nick. No heck he yeah. He can clean man. the door panels himself. Yeah, yeah. So. So that was pretty much it, guys, and, and you can go back and rewatch this, and this will be a, a, a live video that, that will still stick around on the channel that you guys can go back and rewatch yep. if you want to do that. Um, I, I think uh, any last advices from Lars and Ram? Guys? Um, not really. I think, um, you know, uh, it, it was great. You know, the last two hours were really good. I think um, that, you know, the, the fact that you've managed to clean the, the whole Sequoia in, in two hours is is pretty good, I think, because that's a huge car and a lot of area to get through. So uh, yeah, well done, yeah. <laughs> both of you. Although if I'm if I'm giving an honest assessment, I think Levi did most of the work. I, I, he, I, yeah, he absolutely that. did. He he carried he carried that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how I feel half the time is that I do most of the work anyway. So what about you, Lars? <laughs> Now I just want to, um, because I saw in the comments that people asked um, conditioner which kind of product is in the color lock range. So for the co-branding stuff, we work with, with you guys, with Anthony and Levi, where we close together, what makes sense. So also you have this 200 mil bottle and not the small bottle, what we have in Europe, for example, we create yeah. this bigger, we create this bigger uh, brush because we say, okay, that is a little bit more useful or um, more comfortable to, at, at the using, all of this. And also we change the names um, to, to understand a little bit better and um, to optimize it also for detailers. So um, you can, you can, you can um, when you look for a product in an area where you can't get the co-branding products and you want to buy something directly by us and just ask us we can translate it and can tell you what it is so yeah. um but this is really optimized for people who, who do this kind of stuff um what we already saw and um, i'm also impressed how, how good it works that you can remove the ink with just a mild laser cleaner and um how yeah, it, it doesn't look yeah. very dirty before but when you see now how clean it is it was dirty, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was well, and I think true. a lot of people get surprised by that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Clean leather, man. Nothing, nothing, nothing like it, right? It's one of some of the best 50-50s that you can make out there. And so, um, very cool. I, I mean, in terms of left stuff left to talk about, you can check out all the stuff out at theradcompany.com. I think we'll pass it over to Dane to yeah. do our outro. All Thanks, right, Ram guys. and Lars. Thank you guys for being a part thank of us. Well, thank you no, so no, much, no, Ram. Pleasure as always. Thanks. No. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate you being here with us. It's been fun catching up for the last uh, couple hours, getting this truck cleaned up. It's looking good. It's looking real good. But uh, as you can see, you go back anywhere in the stream, you can see it wasn't too much work to get this thing looking better. Even if things look clean, doesn't always mean they are. So 
Make sure you check out the Color Lock lineup right here on the ragcompany.com website. And uh, for more future videos, make sure you are subscribed to the Rag Company YouTube channel, as well as our side channels, the Rag Company podcast channel and the Rag Company FAQ channel, both of which can get you more information, more in-depth, and sometimes just straight across short video answers in the case of the FAQ. So with all that said, till next time, we'll catch you later. Adios.